Welcome to episode one of the Monday Morning Point Guard podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be going through ESPN and Sport, Sports Illustrated's top 50 players that they had ranked here to start the season for next year. Uh, we're also going to be going through our list. Uh, Clayton, do you want to kick us off at who you had for number one? I'm with Kevin Durant. I think he's finally surpassed LeBron James for top, top dog. Um, and then Giannis, number two, I think just because he led a team to the championship last year, I think it's time to put him over LeBron, but who knows? He's he's timeless. He could he could definitely prove me wrong this season. <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting. Your top three is actually exactly the same yeah. as both ESPN and Sports Illustrated. Uh, yep. I, I deviated from that a bit. Um, I had LeBron number one. Um, I know they kind of flamed out in the first round of the playoffs last year, but they had a ton of injuries and that team just kind of didn't make a ton of sense. Um, so I had, I still think until I see somebody best him, <laughs> um, I'm going to continue to think that he's, he's the best um, player in the league. I had Durant at two. The Nets season really last year came down to Kevin Durant having a foot on the line at the end of the Bucks game seven. Um, if, his toe isn't on the three-point line for that shot. They beat the Bucks, and who knows? They may they may win the title um, with a including couple of Holzer guys. loses his job too. If his, yeah, if his yeah. Toes <laughs> and uh, we're probably talking about how Rick Carlisle is going to do for the Bucks instead of yeah. <laughs> later. We'll be talking about him with the Pacers. Yeah. Um, and then I had Giannis number three. Uh, he dominated the finals. Um, I kind of went a step further on my list, and I kind of grouped players together. Um, I had these three in kind of a tier of their own. Yeah, um, definitely a tier of their own. Yeah, they they are kind of far and away the best players. And honestly, I'm not – I wouldn't put up a strong argument against either – any of these guys being the top player in the league. They all have a case for it um, that's about as strong as anybody else's. It's just kind of your personal preference and what you value. Yeah, I think especially with Russ – on the Lakers that could kind of give LeBron a better opportunity to impact the game in different ways than not be so ball dominant like he has been. And that could make him so much more successful than we've seen him. Who knows how it's going to work out. Um, he, he's, he's yeah. had to, he's had to be for them. I mean, outside of Rondo, the year they won the title, um, they've not really had like a, a good point guard or really a lot of guys who can create their own shot. It's kind of been him having to do it on his own. I mean, granted he has Davis, but Davis isn't a playmaker by, you know, most standard ways of thinking. Um, he's a good option to go to if you're a playmaker, but not really a guy who's going to be able to take the playmaking load from, from LeBron. So yeah, it will be interesting to see how, how him and Westbrook coexist. Um, I think we can kind of get into that a little bit later. Um, yeah. I think to varying degrees of success, we'll see that uh, work this year. Um, but yeah, our list was not the same here, even at number four. Um, yeah, that, that fourth or sixth for me, I went back and changed so many times. Jokic, Curry, and Doncic, just because Curry is Curry. And then Jokic, I think, can impact the game more than Curry even. Um, just being a seven foot playmaker is incredible. And then Doncic is almost the same type of player, just a guard. And that's pretty incredible too. He just has a worse team that he has to deal with. Um, I think he'd be higher if his team was better, but he hasn't gotten past the first or second round, I think. Yeah. So I can't put him too high. I think really there's, there's really probably really nine guys this year that I wouldn't be shocked if they won MVP yeah. Um, Curry is definitely one of them. They, they could be really good this year, which would help his case. Um, I had Curry at four. I had Jokic a little bit farther down. Um, I, Curry just had an incredible year last year, like a, really a career year for him, nearly up to the standards of when he was winning back-to-back -back MVPs. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just his presence on the floor, whether he's shooting or not, the entire defense has to be mindful of where he is at all times, the, the whole defense. As soon as he crosses half court, he's a threat to score. And we've just not really seen that before. Uh, same with Jokic, though. I mean, a point center <laughs> is, yeah. is really what he is. Yeah. And they run the entire offense through him. And his playmaking chops are just incredible. This, the angles he sees – 
I don't know that we'll see a player like either Jokic or Curry um, again. And it looks like Sports Illustrated agreed with me. Um, you had Jokic quite a bit higher than, or just yeah, a little bit higher. Than, yeah, it looks like SI had him at five and ESPN had him ESPN. at six. We're really not deviating too much from what they had. I mean, everybody's kind of in the same range. With yeah. my with my tiering system, I kind of had Curry in a tier of his own, um, you know, just below Giannis, Duran, and LeBron. But I do, I think he's better than the next group of players. I think there's there's a little bit of a drop off from him to the next group. I actually had Doncic at five. I think he's, you know, he's going to be in the MVP conversation for sure. A lot of people thought. Oh, he yeah. would, a lot of people thought he would last year, but he came in kind of out of shape and a little bit banged up. Um, yeah, he's the favorite this year, so it wouldn't surprise me if he gets it done, yeah. depending on how they do. I don't know, like, if they finish as a five seed, six seed, I really don't know if he would get it. He I feel would like have they'd to, have to finish higher. He would have to have, like, 35 points and a triple-double, yeah. like, averaging yeah. to probably get it at a, as a fifth seed. Their Which team, he's definitely capable of. <laughs> their team can go in a lot of different directions this year um, as far as the, the roster they're starting with versus the one they're going to finish with. It could be drastically different depending on how the start of the season goes i don't think there's going to be a lot of patience um with that team uh, as far as their their front office is not gonna this is not a year to be patient i think in their mind yeah especially um, with the what they've done in the playoffs they haven't gotten past the second round i think since Doncic has been there so they definitely got to be aiming for at least a western conference title <laughs> Yeah, I would think. Yeah, at least a trip to the conference finals, I feel yeah. like, should be kind of the goal. I mean, they've been unfortunate. The Clippers are kind of a bad matchup for them, and they've ran into them twice in the first yep. round. But And um, it is a tough West, as it always is. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to have that standard when everyone is so good. Yeah. Yeah. I think a, I think a trip out of the first round would be a successful season for them. Like, it'd, it'd be a step it, up. If you were, real, if you were being realistic about yeah. it they just they just got to find a guy who can I think they need a secondary playmaker I think he has to do too much for them and by the time the fourth quarter rolls around he's not in a, he's not in great shape he's not in bad shape certainly but he's not in he's not like a LeBron or a Giannis where you can just they're just a freak athlete and you can just run him forever he gets tired by the fourth because he's had to you know there's no telling what his usage rate yeah. is by the time you get there um but yeah, I, I it looks like, you know, the lowest we had Doncic on any list. You agreed with SI as six. as six, and that was the lowest he was on anybody's. The highest was four. Um, yeah, and I and I had him at five. Um, so I would have had him higher. I think it's just the team success part that they've had in the past. Like, didn't want to put him as high as Curry and Nikola Jokic, who've obviously been. Conference finals they're, or they're, the finals before. They're more playoff proven yeah. than Doncic. And I think it's no fault of his own. I think the Nuggets, right, yeah. Nuggets have a really solid roster. Obviously, with the exception of last year for the Warriors, um, where they basically have a bunch of guys who are bound for China. Um, <laughs> you know, with the exception of that, he's played on some of the greatest teams in NBA history. So we've definitely seen him a lot more in the playoffs. But even what he Curry did was able to do in the play in games was really incredible with, you know, not a lot else to really go with. I mean, Draymond was far and away their second best player last year, and he's not a guy who's typically, typically going to score more than eight or nine points. Right, yeah, he's um, director. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I can just kind of go through this next tier that I had. I already We already talked about Doncic. So in the next grouping of players after Curry, I had Doncic – Davis, Embiid, Jokic, and Harden in that order. Um, and then it kind of looks like the five through nine for everyone else was very similar with just a little bit of different order. You actually had Lillard um, over Harden, which I thought was interesting. I think the role that Harden has with the team, and since it's going to be him, Kyrie, and KD, I think with their roles, it would make Lillard, you know, more of an impactful player. Harden's definitely up there and any type could be a top five player, but I think just with his role, you know, it might be set back a little bit. Yeah. We actually have the exact same top 10, just in a different order. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you, if, for Sports Illustrated, I guess they have Kawhi Leonard in there and that's why Damian yeah. Lillard doesn't make the top 10. 
but right. I, I think you're you're out of your mind if you don't have Lillard at least in the top 10. I mean, I have him at 10, but what he did in the playoffs last year and what he's done year after year, I feel like every year when I'm going through my predictions for the year, I'm like, oh, the Blazers aren't going to make the playoffs or they'll be like a eight or nine and seed and they never are and they like looking at their teams a year after year he just doesn't have the help there that he needs to really make a a deep run in the playoffs and year after year they kind of exceed expectations and are usually you know I, I can't think of a year besides the bubble year where they were with him where they've been outside of like a top six seed in the win in the west they, that's they, really impressive on paper they never really look like a playoff team until they, you know, play through the season and they make it. And it's not even, like, really close. Like like you said, they're top six, usually. Yeah. And you had Embiid way down at 10. Um, yeah. Is I mean, I, I think every player ahead of him is better than him. Okay. So, yeah, that's – I mean, in AD, like, I kind of went back and forth with AD and Embiid. I'm, my ranking for AD is based on a fully healthy Anthony Davis. So like, yeah, we'll that, see what that, we was, get. that was mine as well. I had him at yeah. six. Um, I, I think he's going to have, uh, if you look at the Lakers roster, he's going to have to be in the conversation for defensive player of the year for them to be successful. Um, yeah. And another so, thing with Embiid, um, it's like more playoff, you know, how they've done in the playoffs. It's, it's for me, like I put everyone else above him because they've done better in the playoffs than I think Embiid has with his team. And that's, Maybe because he has a point guard who's afraid to shoot, but who knows? Yeah. We can get into that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll talk about him uh, probably a lot <laughs> later. Um, but uh, with Embiid, the only thing I have him at seven, which I have him as ahead of Jokic. Actually, um, I just think Jokic, while he isn't a bad defensive player, he's not really helping you on that end. He can kind of hold his own. He's not terrible. He used to be outright bad. Um, but last year, he, he really showed an improvement uh, just by getting into shape. Um, and Bede is a factor on the defensive side of the ball as well as the offensive side. And I think there's a strong case that he would have been MVP had he not gotten hurt. Yeah, and he would still be second. If he had been, would that have changed your ranking at all, you think? Or other yeah, people's the, rankings? The MVP, I, I mean, the MVP definitely helps Jokic. That's definitely – putting him at four and then yeah with Embiid if he would have won the MVP I probably would have had him at least above Lillard and Harden probably just probably around where you had him yeah I think it I think it is interesting that we you know if you fact if you take out Kawhi Leonard the only reason he's not on this list is because yeah. I don't I mean he'll come back at the very end of the year if that I don't think he will play this season at all um, I did but, see a report that he's ahead of schedule but at the same time I could see Kawhi Leonard just not wanting to play just that, that that's own good. I think he could play. I don't think yeah. he will. Yeah. Um, and and you know, I I guess he's earned the right to do that. I don't know. He's getting up there, you know, in years now. So I mean, I don't know. I he should probably come back for the playoffs, but he's kind of neurotic, so I doubt. He yeah, will. I think he would if they're <laughs> in the playoffs. If, and if they're not in the playoff hunt, which who knows. He definitely won't be at the end of the season. I, I could see. Yeah, that will. It, it will be interesting to see how the, how they're able to survive without him because he, Paul George looked really good in the playoffs, but he's also looked really bad at times. Yeah, yeah. He um, definitely he definitely pulled his weight in the playoffs, which is why I have him as high as I have him um, because he kind of showed without Kawhi he can somewhat handle the team. Yeah. Um, if playoff P actually was playoff P for once. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't pandemic P this time around. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did notice that, you know, if you if you take off Kawhi on the Sports Illustrated list, everybody pretty much has the same top 10 yeah. in slightly different orders. Um, it's really the one through three that we all have kind of grouped together and then everybody mm -hmm. else. I get I would put Curry closer if I were to group play them together, sort of like I did if I had to put Curry in a group. I would put him in with the Doncic, Davis, and Bead group. He's closer to that than he is to LeBron, Durant, and Giannis. Um, but yeah, that kind of rounds out the top ten. Uh, ESPN rounded out their list. They had um, Curry at five, Jokic at six, and Bead at seven, Lillard at eight, Davis at nine, ten, Harden, uh, Sports Illustrated, Jokic five, Doncic. Uh, six, Harden seven, Embiid eight, Davis nine, uh, and then just for sake of argument, we'll we'll have 
Lillard be the 10 spot for them, even though it was Kawhi. I, I really don't know what they were doing with their list because I feel like if you're going to put Kawhi on there, like he should be higher. Yeah. Right. Like I would, should, I'd, I'd have him higher than 10. I mean, I, he's probably, looking at their list. He's got to be him, at least five. I mean, I would probably say four, but yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Or you're taking into account he's missing most of the year. And if you want to say you're getting him back for the playoffs, he's not number 10. He's not going to be more no. impact for the, impactful than Damian Lillard playing, you know, two games for the season plus playoffs. I just, and he's I, showed every, like every time he's in the playoffs, he shows how much how much impact he has on the floor especially in the playoffs too so i think i'd have him like around five if i put him in there yeah I'd definitely if, have him over Jokic. i don't know about curry but yeah i he, i would have, I would have had to, yeah i would have had to thought about uh the curry versus Kawhi yeah. piece Kawhi is just such a monster on defense and you know he's capable of giving you 40 points in the game it's yeah it's tough to argue against them. And locks down your best player, too. Yeah, so. that, that makes it really tough to, to argue against him. So I guess we'll kind of go um, – we'll go. Th- I don't know. Do you want to do like 11 through 15 here? They could just kind of start. Yeah, yeah, that uh, works. So 11, ESPN had Bradley Beal, which I thought was – That was insane. <laughs> was very high for him. Yeah, I don't um, know why he got up there. I, I mean, he's in the top 20, I, yeah. I feel like, but – I, uh, saying that he's like slightly worse than James Harden on on their list is a little crazy. I mean, they've what is the furthest the Wither- Wizards have made it? I think they made it to they made it uh, to the conference finals one year. Did they? Or maybe conference semis? I think it was conference, conference semis. semis. They yeah. made it. They've made it there a couple of times, but that's second round of the playoffs. Like whoop de yeah. whoop de do. Um, I, I obviously he's you know a 30 point a game score he was he was nearly the league's leading scorer or did he end up leading no the Curry league? won it went down to the last yeah, game I, I remember it, I remembered it was close so I mean he's obviously a great scorer but it's the rest of the things that well not bad at he's not he doesn't excel like the players above him are like slightly below her um so then they had Paul George Chris Paul Tatum and Booker uh, for Sports Illustrated. They go Damian Lillard, 11, Paul George, Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, Bradley Beal at 15. That was where I had him. Um, and then you had Kyrie at 11. That uh, that's a, that one surprised me a bit. I think he's still one of the most skilled players in the league by far. It's just, are we even going to see him play this year is, is the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I... I have him lower. I would probably have him in the 13, 14 range if I were being, you know, if I knew I was getting him for the year. Yeah. He's pretty, he he struggles with injuries, but not only that, uh, he might just take a sabbatical and just leave and not not tell you when he's coming back for, for, you know, weeks on end. So, which, yeah, that definitely goes into uh, probably having him lower as, if I were to do that, that's probably why I would do that. Um, but his skill is incredible. I think yeah. at least skill wise, he should be a top fifteen player. It's just oh, if he's even available. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's we we've seen him do it on the highest, uh, uh, with the with the brightest lights and in the most crucial of moments, we've seen him come through. And he's probably the best ball handler in NBA history. Yeah. I mean, he's certainly in the in the argument for it. And then you factor in his shooting. Um, he's kind of not really giving you a lot on defense, but with his finish, he's probably the best ball handler in league history and probably the best below the brim finisher we've ever seen. Yeah. With the his, way he's, he's th- such an acrobat too, whenever he gets to the rim, it's like yeah. kind of like Allen Iverson, but you know, you could go a little further and say he's better. I, I think he's better than Iverson. At fin- I think he's better than Iverson in general. Um, in general. Yeah. I think they're they're similar though. They're very similar in their play styles. And you would have seen Kyrie play very if you had swapped them and put, you know, Kyrie during that time on the Sixers, it would have been like, well, do we play him at shooting guard or or point guard? He's really he, the Brooklyn situation is really great for him because you have Harden to play the point or the more traditional 
point and then he can just get get you buckets and that's, that's another reason why i like to have him high because of the situation he's in he'll they're, they're all set up to succeed so it's 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 kind of like the lakers they're all just kind of set up to do with their own thing now and you know it's gonna work out for both of the teams they'll probably face each other in the finals yeah if they're all healthy yeah definitely um you have tatum at 12 i also had tatum at 12 i guess we think more highly of tatum than slightly more high, highly of tatum than espn yeah, they're kind of in that range. We both had Booker at 13. I was surprised to see Trey Young at 19 for you. I had him at 14, and I have been a, a staunch critic yeah, of it's, Trey Young. <laughs> it's so hard because the playoffs, he was incredible, and no one ever could have seen that happening for Atlanta. Um, no. Especially with the Sixers, but it's it's just the defense for me. Um, and I'm wondering if they're if they're going to get rid of that foul call that he tries to pull on everyone and gets in the paint. If they're not going to be calling that, how much you know less is he doing? Which if he's getting like five to six points on that a night, definitely drop him a little bit. But you know, I, the playoffs definitely helps him out. I know a lot of people compare him to Curry. I see him more as more Nash than Curry. He doesn't. He's a great shooter and he shoots well from from deep like curry but he doesn't have the off the dribble crazy shots that are like coming off of cuts like curry does like curry can get a shot off from anywhere trey young you know he'll take a logo shot uh because he's open it's not like right. he didn't have to work for it as much uh not this and, and nash is a great shooter too but he wasn't nearly the shooter curry was but trey young is a really great playmaker he some of the passing angles he sees are insane he, he, I noticed in the playoffs, he was at least trying on defense, which is honestly half of it in the NBA. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what is he, six foot two? I mean, yeah, I mean, and, you can blow by him. Probably a buck 70 soaking wet. Like teams yeah. are just going to pick on him. Um, but just his playmaking and scoring and just what that Atlanta team did, I, I would, I was wrong about him. Um, I did not think he was going to be very good in the nba i just didn't see it um, i didn't think so either i really didn't think he was going to be as good as everyone thought he was especially when he was in college too but i mean he's definitely proven me wrong i've, even, I've even, seen him play twice in person it's incredible even yeah. up until last year i was pretty critical of him uh last season is when i turned it around turned around on him and granted he started playing different started playing less selfishly i i just thought you could put a lot of guys in those early atlanta years it when this with the touches he was getting and the opportunities he was getting and get similar production. Um, but last year he really, he really stepped it up. You showed he was, yeah. you know, very but, deserving of, of, you know, the accolades and, and the kind of the praise he was getting. Um, and they went toe to toe with the bucks. I mean, they, they gave him everything they wanted. And I didn't think that Atlanta team from a roster construction standpoint to start the year, I, I didn't no think way. it made any sense. I but it, it worked. I don't know how. Um they kind of well, did they fire Lloyd Lloyd Pierce in the middle of the season or yeah, they fired the they fired Lloyd Pierce in the middle of the season and yeah. they were bad under him. Yeah. And I don't know whether or not he's a good or bad coach, but they regardless, they were bad under him. McMillan is more I think I think McMillan um for the Trey Young thing, I think he's able to command more respect. He's been around the league a long time. He was a former player. I don't, I don't know if Lloyd Pierce was, but I know McMillan was, and he's had some success coaching. I think he's a, a, a really good coach, and I think he was able to rein in some of the more selfish habits that Trey Young had, and kind of taught him, you know, how to get his teammates involved early. And I mean, they played with. They played with his personality last year in the playoffs. Yeah. They, they were, and that's definitely an important thing as a point guard too. Um, and that's that just comes with experience. He's only played three years anyway, so yeah, you know that'll come with time. The, the only thing that I would say for him that needs to be better if he wants to be higher on the list is shooting efficiency. I don't think I've, I don't think he's done more than forty percent from three any of the three years. I don't know that he ever um, will. With I, the shots that he takes, uh, it's hard to do that. So yeah, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. It was, yeah it, yeah, and he's just not he's just not the knockdown shooter that Curry is. I mean, right. he, he's a great shooter, but I mean Curry and, and and Duncan Robinson to have my heat bias come out, even Beal to some extent. If the guys who are really great shooters are just a little bit above him in terms of their shooting. Like I'm never mad if he's taking a three. 
um, unless it's just some crazy step back nonsense. But um, yeah, I I had him at fourteen. I think he was I think he was really good, um, and I think the guys I have below him are are clearly below him at least on, at least in my mind uh my heat bias came out a little bit here probably <laughs> yeah jimmy I, butler's high up on that i have list. jimmy butler at 11 I, i'm gonna make the case for him i'm gonna make the case i had him the highest of anybody but yeah. he was 16 for you he was 14 for uh si and 16 for espn so i'm in the, i'm at least in the conversation um i had I think just with him, you get both sides of the ball. He's an underrated playmaker. I mean, the Heat, for as much as I love Dragic, or, or loved Dragic, I guess I should say, now that he's not with us, he's not like a traditional set-em-up point guard. Like, Jimmy and Bam did the lion's share of the playmaking for those Heat teams, and especially on our on our finals run, I don't think that was a fluke. I know a lot of people think that that was a – a fluke because of the bubble. I think that team makes it to the finals with the path they had in front of them and the way they were playing kind of regardless. And we saw him in that finals. That was only, you know, two seasons ago, go toe to toe with LeBron, like in, yeah. in an NBA finals and even maybe outplay him because LeBron wasn't guarding him on, on defense. Jimmy was guarding LeBron the entire game. He would play 46 to 48 minutes. Yeah, he was, he was exhausted. <laughs> he was – he. so we've seen him on the on the biggest stage, you know, that he's capable of leading a team to the finals. We've I, not I, would th I would think that the, the eight seed he um, – or the seven seed, whatever they were last year, I think that was more of a fluke than the bubble. I, I think they're better they, than that. They we'll, we'll talk about them when we talk about yeah. the East. Uh, I'm a little bit I, – I know a little bit um, – you know, more than the average person, just because I've watched them basically every night that they play. They, they really just had the year from hell last year. Yeah. Um, they COVID injuries, like you name it, they were, they were having everything. I mean, Jimmy missed a ton of the season too. And they just, he's there. He's the engine. He's a great leader. I know he's had a kind of a bad rap, but the players he's had issues with are guys who we'll talk about later on this list who should, who should be higher yeah. <laughs> but they aren't for the reasons that um, that Jimmy Butler didn't that work Jimmy well doesn't them. like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I have Jimmy, I have Tatum, Booker, Trey Young, and Bradley Beal at 15. So again, we're the lists, whether well, they're in different orders, I think Bradley Beal at 11 is absurd. I think that was insane for too. ESPN, but yeah, um, there, I mean, 11 through 15, 11 to 15, that's not a huge difference. So I'm not going to kill them too much. Um, but, yeah, I, Booker was obviously incredible throughout the playoffs. I think you'd be silly to Yeah, and that's why he's up there for sure. I mean, I, that's why I have him above Beal because, you know, I, similar styles, but he did better in the playoffs. He took a team farther with, you know, where they, they went to the conference finals. So that yeah. was – or the finals. So that yeah, was they, they awesome. Were, Beal is never, <laughs> never going to see that in Washington at least. No, not in Washington. And Booker's and, – and going forward, you know, Booker's only going to be better. He's still really young. Oh, yeah. We've kind of seen probably the best that we're going to see from Beal, which is, a, you know, a great player, top 15 in the league, you know, all-NBA all candidate. But he's not going to really make any drastic leaps forward. Like, like we could see Booker do, um, you know, because this is kind of a projection of next year, which I, I can't believe how low – Booker is 15 on ESPN and 16 on SI. I just, I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I'd, I would definitely have him over Beal um, and Butler too, just because of, you know, the most recent year and looking forward, I think that he's in a better position anyway, just because, you know, the system in Phoenix is pretty perfect for him to do what he wants with Chris Paul there. I mean, that was such a, that was such a steal for them. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've had longer to see Jimmy and Tatum do it, I, I think, yeah. uh, which is why I have them above him. But I I mean, he led them through the West, which is yeah, which not is easy, not easy to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he had some bad games in the playoffs. He had some bad finals games, but he also had some phenomenal games in the playoffs. Yeah, and, a lot of people say that the West rep for them was, you know, injury plagued, which is why they got to beat, you know, L.A., Denver, which is which true, is true, but, 
but yeah. you play that you play the team you still played in, yeah yeah you play the team that's in front of you it's not their fault that yeah you no. know they had, some of the other teams had some bad breaks and it, i still think they beat the lakers first round even with davis i they they the lakers didn't have the the horses last year i mean it was davis and lebron they got nothing from montrez harrell who was no he was to, he was a bust i thought that would work out a lot better for I, him i think schroeder hurt them more than helped them. I think they were much better off with Caruso out there than Schroeder. And I don't think Caruso is better than Schroeder, but like for what they needed, like Schroeder would just, there would be eight possessions a game where he would just go rogue and, you know, take some terrible shot when LeBron is yeah, calling for That's not what I want to hear. Um, <laughs> With him being signed to the Celtics. But. Yeah, I don't know how much of him you watched, but well, he's... the Celtics do need they they do need someone to score off the bench. Like that is absolutely what they lacked last year, and, and Schroeder can definitely do it if they figure out the lineup. Um, <laughs> but it's who's going to be starting ahead of him would be my question. Yeah, the the thing for the Lakers was when they got um, rid of Rondo. I think that hurt them more than anything that they did yeah. in the off season. I think that was so huge. Yeah. Well, um, for my tiering here, I kind of had Jimmy starting off the tier, and it's going to end at 19 with Kyrie. Um, I think there's a steep drop-off between, like, Lillard and Jimmy, um, and then kind of going forward after Kyrie, there's another pretty significant drop-off in, like, the quality of players. That's the thing about these lists is, you know, we're talking about – you know, 11 and 12, or we'll, we'll talk about Jimmy versus Kyrie, at least on my list. That's There's not a huge difference between those two in terms of, like, where their their skill level, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but there's a huge difference between um, up at the top, you know, Giannis and Luca. If you had, if you had Luca, so like you can have on these lists, you can have like an eight spot gap, but the gap is less than you know one spot later on in the list. Right. Um. So kind of this, we'll just go. I guess sixteen through twenty here. I feel like we touched yeah. on Bradley Beal enough. Um. I had Chris Paul, Donovan Mitchell, Paul George, Kyrie Irving. Actually, I guess I'll stop there just for the sake of my tears. Um. You had. Uh, Jimmy Butler, I, I hate that to see him that low. Uh, <laughs> CP3, uh, Donovan Mitchell, Trey Young, and let's see, ESPN had Devin Booker, which is I, if he, he's not a top, it's way too low. Yeah, that's crazy. It's not having him in the top. 50. Actually, that's Sports Illustrated. I'm sorry, Sports Illustrated had Booker at 16, Young at 17, Paul at 18, and Kyrie at 19. Looks like they agree with me on that. This yeah. is where ESPN lost me here in this group. Eh? They have Jimmy, Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, and Chris Middleton. At yeah, that, I mean he had a, he had a good finals, but I, I wouldn't put him top twenty. He definitely proved to be reliable, but I, I I'm not putting him above you know Kyrie, Bam, Kyrie. Drew Holiday. No, like I guess the case for him, he's a he's a decent defender. He's pretty good on that side, and he's efficient scoring. But 19 is just really high for him. I mean, there were there were games earlier on and bes- with, where he would just disappear. He just wasn't there. And the Bucks would get, you know, they would lose because he just yeah. didn't show up. Um, yeah, I, I can't imagine having him that high. Uh, I yeah, heard- ESPN did some questionable things with theirs. Bradley Beal at 11 and Middleton at 19. I think having Chris Paul above Booker is bizarre, too. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of his leadership and being in the league longer, I guess I could see it. Like, he obviously impacted that team so, so much. Um, but, you know, Booker was the go-to guy. Unless you're talking about CP3 pull-up from the mid-range, he might be the best player on the planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one game where he had, I've like, never seen him miss ten, that in shot. A, 10 in a row. Yeah. He went the third quarter, one of the finals games, he just he just torched him. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're they lose the, both of the lists lose me at Paul George at number twelve. That's just crazy to me. Yeah. I know he, I know he had a good playoffs, but how many bad playoffs have we seen him have? I I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, and I've been listening to Paul George over Tatum for like two or three years now. I think no. it's so proven, and now Booker's definitely over him no. too. T- um, the 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 team around Tatum, with respect to your Celtics, um, it's not a super talented team and it doesn't make a ton of sense roster wise not like 
you know, he has Tatum is kind of, you know, he has Jalen Brown, but comparing like your wing partner, you know, Jalen Brown to Kawhi Leonard, like it's no contest. It, Paul George yeah. has had some of the best situations oh, yeah. as, as a player to be in. And he's just not really done much with them. Last year, he had a really good playoffs and he almost drugged that, you know, what was left of that Clippers team to a finals appearance, but he didn't. And typically his playoff performances are disappointing. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, it was Donovan Mitchell's rookie year. He went he, when Paul George was in Oklahoma City. There's no way it, Oklahoma City should have lost that series. They let rookie Donovan no. Mitchell come. He was an MVP them. candidate. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering if he does that again this year with Kawhi being gone, but he, he um, probably will be in the conversation if he can stay healthy. Um, oh, yeah. Which is a, a another concern of his. Um, yeah. The Chris Middleton was really the only. I, I had Paul George at 18. I He's still really good. And all the guys on, at least in our top 50, I mean, you're talking about guys who are either the best player on a team or the second best player, best player on a team. Right. Um, yeah, that's about where we are. And everybody. one of my things, one of my things for Donovan Mitchell, at least, he's at 18 on my list. You have him at 17. I think he's he could be top 15 by the end of the season. Oh, easy. And easy. I think it's just we haven't seen it enough to, for me to put him there yet. But. I, I think they beat the Clippers this past year if he doesn't get hurt. Yeah, they, they've always just had terrible luck. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll talk about his his running mate here. Yeah, you'll talk about him much later than I will. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's yeah. He's I'm not I'm not a huge fan of him. <laughs> I, I'm not either, but I couldn't, in good conscience, put him any lower than I did. So that kind of rounds, with the exception of Chris Middleton, we've really not had any deviations here as far yeah. as what everyone has had so far. Any crazy, crazy things? I just can't imagine putting Chris Middleton that high. I have. You know, they have him in basically my, if we're doing tier system, they have him in like the third tier of players, which is like, I, if you look at the rest of the guys on this list, like Chris Paul, Paul George, to a certain extent, Kyrie, you feel really good, or at least pretty good if one of these guys on this list is your best player. Yeah. Like you're, you're at least fighting for a playoff spot. If Chris Middleton is your best player, what are you you are you fighting for a, a, a lottery pick or a top pick? Yeah, I don't think you're in the play in if he's your best player. He's no. he's lucky to have Giannis by his side, that's for sure. Yeah, he he's really good and he's good and he's perfect alongside Giannis because he's able to kind of you know, he's really good in isolation, which is kind of what you need to do in the fourth quarter when the game's kind of you know winding down. You need a guy who can just get you a bucket, which he can do. But he also has the benefit of he's always going to be playing one on one with somebody. He's not going to have to play. He's not going to have to play against the double team because right. you're, you're never going to want Giannis, yeah, running free. Yeah, um, yeah. He did hit a huge shot in the finals, though. Maybe that's why ESPN put him high up there. Yeah, they seem to like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess we'll just do. T- I, well, I guess let's do 20 through 26 just to keep up with my tears. This yeah. is where this is where things start to get a little wild. It's, once you get out of the top 20, it, it really starts to get mixed up. And we even have the same three for 20, 21, and 22 just mixed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I have Bam, um, Z- then Zion, then Jalen Brown at 22, Drew Holiday, Rudy Gobert, who we will not see for a while on most <laughs> lists, Julius Randle, and Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, you had Jalen Brown at 20, Bam at 21, Zion at 22, Ja Morant, which I was surprised to see as high as he was, uh, Aunt Carl Anthony Towns, Holiday, and Westbrook. Um, SI had Zion, Gobert, Bam, Towns, Mitchell. Mitchell's at 24 for them. Yeah, that's I just insane. I'm that. looking at that. Uh, Ja Morant, Middleton, Brown. Um, I think I went one spot too far. That's okay. And then ESPN has Kyrie, Bam, Holiday, Zion, Towns, Gobert, Brandon Ingram, 
to, to yeah. round out their 26 spots. So this is that after Kyrie, I have Bam in the next group at 20, the next group of players. These That's are, about right. I, I, I think there's a pretty pretty decent sized drop off between Kyrie and Bam. And yeah. I don't think there's a ton of space in between the rest of these guys. Um, I'm going to make the case for Bam uh, just because obviously I love him. Um, he he's a pseudo point center. I mean, he does a lot of playmaking stuff for us. He we run it. He does his assist numbers aren't ever going to be as good as what his playmaking is because of the offense that we run. Um, the offense leaves a lot to be desired with the scoring for him. He's got some shooting touch, but he has some confidence issues with the shot for some reason. I think uh, the biggest thing for him is when he's running offense, you're bringing the center out and he's not getting the rebounds. So right. it kind of gives you really good spacing when, you're, when your center's running shit like that. And it's just like Jokic doing the same thing. You're bringing the big guy out and just opens up the middle it, third. The, the Bucks kind of broke his brain last year in the playoffs, though, because they just had Lopez basically play off of him. And once he missed a couple of jump shots, like he just – he lost confidence in it, which is a shame because he is a very good jump shooter. He just never yeah. takes the shots. Um, defensively is really where you see it with him. His rebounding yeah. numbers were down last year. Um, I A lot of teams will try to pull him out and switch him onto a guard, which is traditionally what you should do uh, as an offense is try and get, you know, your best player or your best ball handler, scorer, and a switch on the center. The problem is Bam can can guard, you know, guards. He would, I, I forget the exact number, but guards shot like in the low 30s when he was guarding them last year. Yeah. Um, so defensively, he, he guards one through five easy. Absolutely, and yeah. That's just, Part that's such a huge advantage when your center – and he makes free throws, so you can play him down the stretch of games. Like he's like he's exactly what you want from a modern center. Um, and I think he's. I thought he should have been in the running for defensive player of the year last year, and I expect he'll be in it in the in the running even more so this year. He's he's a monster on defense. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised how good he is at defense because he is slightly undersized, but I think that's what helps him do well against the guards too. So it really end, ends up working. What's he like, six nine or six ten? Yeah, somewhere in there. I mean, I think you could probably say either. I think he's he was listed at six ten, but the, since they started listing people without their shoes on, I think now he's yeah. six nine. Yeah, um, last year everyone shrunk by like two inches magically, yeah, except for Durant, who's yeah. I I don't care. He's seven feet tall. I, yeah, he's at least seven. I mean, he can say he's six nine or whatever, but he's typically the tallest dude on the court, and it's not close. <laughs> Well, when I was watching him um, in the USA games this summer, he was standing next to Rudy Gobert, and I'm pretty sure he was taller than Rudy Gobert. Just and I don't Gobert's... know if, it was a if I don't know if it's the camera angle, but he was definitely taller than him, and he's over seven foot. So, oh yeah, yeah, no, Durant, Durant is tall. He might never know. stop growing. He's he's weird about that. Like he doesn't want to be considered a seven footer, but he. he I don't know why. Is. Yeah, he absolutely is. Um, yeah, I and then you have we kind of have Jalen Brown. Um, Zion and uh, Bam grouped together, you and I. Yeah. Now, the other list don't. I, I think Jalen Brown is super underrated, and yeah. I think you you obviously agree. It looks like the other lists have him at 27. They both agreed on that. I don't know what they're watching with him, but he is a lockdown defender on the perimeter on one oh, side yeah. of the ball and a very good scorer. I might think of him a little bit more highly because he's on the all NBA torches the heat team. Uh, he <laughs> always just gives us work and he is. Yeah. I mean, he does every, he's, he's the wing player that you want in today's game, shoots threes, drives to the basket, gets to the foul line. He plays excellent defense. I, I can't imagine having him not in the top 25. Like that's just insane to me. Yeah, he's and he's really strong too, and I think that helps him, you know, score pretty much anywhere he wants to. Yeah. He's so good for the Celtics because Tatum is not the most consistent player, I'd say, with the levels that he wants to be playing at. But like when that's happening, you can get forty out of Jalen Brown on any given night that Tatum's not doing it. So and it, it works out really well. There's some guys on on the list here going forward who can get you forty on any given night, but not to the level that Brown does, and certainly there's not very many left that can that can realistically get you 40 um kind of moving forward here um 
Can't help but notice. I guess we can talk about Gobert now. <laughs> um, can't help. He's 25 on ESPN's list. He's 21, which is is high for him. That's I think. Really, yeah. I guess we can talk about Zion after Gobert. Um, actually, let's just talk about Zion now because he's you okay. know, he's kind of in that mix. Um, he's insane. I, I, th- he, I mean, yeah, you go. Ahead. He needs to just. He needs to at least play better defense. I think. Um, but he can obviously get to the rim as easily as he, easily as he wants to, and that's huge for him. Um, I think if he kind of gets in better shape and can kind of start being more of a playmaker and running the ball a little bit better, I think it would help him out, and definitely the Pelicans if he if he even stays there long term. But uh, I don't know. I think it's only because what we've, we've only seen him for two years. He could definitely be higher on this list by the end of the season. I mean, he's he averaged twenty six, I think, last year. Yeah, he he. It's not inconceivable that he would be in the 28 to 30 range yeah. this year. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really for lack of touches. Um, yeah. We'll talk about Brandon Ingram a little bit later. I, I don't know how well they actually fit together. but I don't think they're pl- – I think they're making Ingram as the one the one option on that team, which is why Zion, even though he's still averaging over 25 a game, like he could definitely be doing more if he, w- if he were the one option over Brandon Ingram. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he – it's just unstoppable in the paint. I mean, absolutely unguardable in the paint. Uh, he's he just in general. I mean, there's really not much you can do when he gets ahead of steam. And when they ran him at point, which they did on certain sets, and especially him driving to the left, like the defense is just hosed. They have yeah, no. I think there's, there's no answer for that because if you put if you put a smaller guy who can keep up with with them on him he's shoving you under the basket and there's nothing right, yeah. to do about it and even some of the big guys i mean he's he put I, he overpowers anyone he wants to and I, th- yeah. I think that's why if they if they put him in more of a ball handling role i think he'd do a lot better he's a decent passer too i think that's one of the underrated parts of his game i i am surprised at i expected him to be special on defense like one of the best defensive players in the league i really did coming in when he was coming out of duke uh, there was a shot again when they're playing your Clemson Tigers where he was like, oh, I know, yeah. he was under the basket and the guy goes, starts going up for the shot. He takes two steps and jumps and, and swats it into the fifth row. The yeah, guy was on he, the three point line. It took him, you know, half a second to close from underneath the basket to block a shot out on the three point line. It's yeah. Just, that is it's by far one of the most athletic, sequences i've probably ever seen on a basketball court (laughs) that exact play right there and then later that game he gave us a nice windmill dunk or 360 or both i don't don't remember which one he gives everybody that yeah Yeah. no he he offensively he's basically unguardable it's just a matter of who's who's coaching there now i know they got rid of van gundy i don't know idea he's coaching um yeah van gundy i have very few nice things to say about him as an NBA coach. I think um, a lot of players would agree with that. Yeah. The way they used him was not – they didn't use him as much or put him in positions. Also, the GM hasn't done him any favors. The teammates around him aren't exact. It's not rocket science with him. He's like – he plays – a like, ideally, you would want a team like what the Bucks have around him. Well, I think Giannis is pretty similar to uh... – Zion in terms of how easily they can get to the basket right. and um, Giannis is obviously much better on defense and way more athletic than Zion is but I mean who knows what that looks like in five years yeah Giannis is also seven feet tall that's that's the big difference with him but um, I think Giannis is probably a better playmaker but Zion is is not a bad playmaker by any means like he can pass out of double teams which is really you know what you want and that's one thing we we didn't talk too much about Embiid that's one thing that Embiid struggles with that Jokic doesn't. Um, he when yeah. when a double team comes on him, he kind of freaks out and doesn't know what to do with the ball. Well, um, when the Celtics played the Sixers in the playoffs two years ago, that's we would wait for him to get the ball in the paint, and then Smart would just swarm him, and he would have no idea he'd turn the ball over almost every time. Yeah, yeah he yeah, and that you can't do that with Zion. He's not an, an elite playmaker. He's not, but he's he's not bad there. I mean, he's – that's not a weakness of his. It's not a strength. It's not a weakness. Um, yeah, so I think those three, at least for us in our mind, are kind of ahead of the next group. Yeah. Um, I kind of had them grouped together with this next group. 
Um, Drew Holiday, I think, was kind of – that was my next one. ESPN had him at 22. Um, I can't believe how low he is for SI. And you had him at 25. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's kind of he's kind of in the mix here. I think um, he's very slept on. I think he's one of the most underrated players. Is, and I'm yeah. surprised. I know he had some bad finals games, but he was also picking up Chris Paul and Booker full court. So yeah. I think you got to cut him some slack on offense when he's guarding two of the best perimeter scores in the league full court. And he made, I mean, when they started, when they went to that, Chris Paul fell apart. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he was hurt or if it was holiday. Also, guys around the league seem to think Holiday is the best defender. You've, yeah, and I can see why. I mean, I've, I thought that he's been underrated since his days in New Orleans, and yeah. it's now coming out that he's on a bigger stage, you know, in the playoffs and meaningful games. But yeah, I still think he's probably a little bit underrated on defense. Definitely. Well, and on. I mean, he's a he's a decent offensive player, but that's not why you have him. I, yeah. In that, in that last series that we had with them, the Heat, in that first round, we couldn't get the ball across half court. Like, yeah. We were getting into our sets so late into the shot clock because he was just hounding Dragic, Nun, Hero, all the way up the court. And then we yeah, just he's we, definitely a pass. we couldn't do anything about it. Um, he's also very strong. Like you are not gonna push him around. If you put him yeah. on a bigger, a bigger player, he can hold his own because they can't move him. Um, yeah, he's probably the best defender in the league. I mean, or at least in the conversation, best perimeter defender for sure, but he's in the conversation for best overall. Yeah, uh, a lot of guys in the league seem to think he's the best overall defender, and I'm not going to disagree with them. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones playing against him, so I, yeah. I'll take their word for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have Ja after Zion, which um, I have Ja a bit later. I have him at 30. Um, I was there something I missed <laughs> with him. <laughs> I mean, it's recency, I think, just what he did with Memphis this year. I think he was incredible. They didn't get much out of Jaron Jackson, at least as much as they thought they would. Um, and obviously, they didn't do anything in the playoffs. But I think with the team they have, he really showed out. And I think it's probably a little bit forward-looking to have him at 23. Um, but I certainly think he can lead a team that's you know built a little bit better into the playoffs. The only reason I didn't have him as high, I mean, I think they did take – didn't they take a game – in their first round series, they won the first game, and then they got they got okay. swept after that. Yeah, I still think that's pretty good. And to beat the beat Curry and on the stage that they did, yeah, that game got, was incredible. The play in game too. Yeah, that was that was a really great game. And Ja played incredible. Um, I know he shot really well in that game. I don't think historically, which is not a consistent thing. <laughs> no, and that's why I have him lower. Uh, yeah, I just and that's why I don't have him any lower than thirty. Um, because to to get to the play in and and take a game off the one seed in the playoffs in the West, that's that's a tall order, and yeah. it's you know. But the reality is, if there was no play in, they wouldn't have been playing. That's that's, um, that's true. I like so, the play in. I don't know. I don't know how many people feel about it. But I think the play in is a cool idea. I I like it, but I also there's things I don't like about it. I think too many teams make the playoffs as it is. Um, you're talking about over. I think they're. I think there needs to be two more teams, but over half the teams make the playoffs and, and now you're adding two more into the mix. And particularly in the East, um, it's like, who, who cares about the Yeah, I think with the, the way East. that the league is now, it does seem like they, you know, the eight and seven seeds aren't doing much. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, no. they're, the East especially is so top heavy um, last year and this year too. The West is a little bit more competitive, but um, definitely in the East, I think. You know, those eight and seven seeds really don't have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I guess we have to talk about Rudy Gobert if we must. I don't really <laughs> like talking about him, but um, I don't know. I, I know jazz fans are really jazzed, no pun intended, with, with his play. And the analytics like him, but uh, when you watch the jazz play, and particularly in the Clippers series, like he was a non-factor. And he was getting torched the entire series he played in the entire playoffs. I think like that's and the, he gets the defensive player of the year and all that. But I think if you watch him, he's just getting torched every time down the court. His on off, like the on off numbers for him defensively are really great. Like it, it, they're like historically great. And he's a great rim protector. But what the Clippers did to him, they just pulled him out away from the basket, made him guard a shooter, and he can't chase people on the perimeter. Yeah. And hopefully with a center that you're 
paying what you're paying him, you're getting something on offense. He gives you nothing on offense. Yeah. A pick and roll, he'll go up and catch it maybe. Um, the thing with him is even though he's a slow defensive player, he's got the longest arms probably on earth. So if he gets beat, he can at least make a recovery. He, yeah. Which yeah. he's done insanely amounts. So I, I have there's at, that. Yeah, I have him at 24. And I mean, he's... <laughs> He's not the best center in the league, but he's he's one of the better centers in the league. I'm not going to sleep on him like that. And in the Olympics, he did really well. Like he he gave Team USA trouble on those pick yeah. and rolls, which makes you wonder why he doesn't do that more. I will say with him, he leads the league in like the softest dunks, and then like a, a huge celebration after he like <laughs> rim grazes. It's it's hilarious. But no, I, yeah, he I, he has a seven foot ten wingspan, which is just yeah. absurd. I mean, you're pushing eight feet with the wingspan. So anything around the basket, he's going to be great at. But, like, can you play him in the final, you know, four minutes of a game if a team just goes to an all-shooting lineup? It doesn't, right. look, it doesn't look like you can. So you can't have him any higher than what we have him. I, I, I certainly would not put him higher. <laughs> no, and you have him at 37, 37 yeah. which he's probably closer to that than he is where I have him or where ESPN and SI have him. Definitely where SI has him at 21. That's no. Um, but when I started looking at some of the players, I was going to be potentially like putting over him in like the 30s. I was like, I can't have him any lower than that. Um, I guess we should talk about Julius Randle too, because he is – not on the list, um, or at least not as high for everyone else as he was for me. I feel like everyone forgot about last year uh, because of the playoffs things. He's 42 for ESPN. Yeah, where, I think that's way too low. I have him at 33, where which is, you could definitely put him in oh, above if, that. So 42 for ESPN, 41 for SI, and you yeah. have him at 33. Yeah. He was top five in MVP voting last year. Like, yeah, his, and his numbers were insane. Like, he put up some crazy numbers last year. His numbers um, were great. I mean, he got a, he got all NBA second team, which I would not have put him there. I think there were other fours that could have made it over him. Um, he was definitely all NBA regardless. But <clears throat> okay, so he was top four. I mean, he he led a team to a top four seed in the East. He averaged twenty four and ten with six assists, 81% free throw shooting at the line, 47 on twos, and 41 on threes. What, yeah. what more do you want from a guy? 2011, <laughs> three, 2011 and six on efficient shooting? Like, what, yeah, what else the, can he do? three-point percentage, I looked at that the other night, and that was actually pretty – I, yeah, I didn't you don't think he was above 40%. You don't, you don't but, think of him as an above 40% free throw shooter? I mean, three-point no, shooter. No, I mean, he was definitely – not doing that in New Orleans. I thought he was still a little bit underrated in New Orleans and he just has a better opportunity in New York. The thing with me was the guys that I have above him, I would take on a team before him, maybe not Levine looking at it again, but the rest I would take above him just because of experience at this point. I, I, we're getting into the part of the list where you're not a very good team if these guys are your best players. Yeah. But, and so he's kind of miscast as the lead guy on the Knicks team. But if he was your number two option, I think you are you are thrilled, and I think you're, yeah. pro you're probably competing for a top seed in your conference with him as a number two guy. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Uh, yeah, and the next guy I have is Carl Anthony Towns, which you had him at twenty four. Um, he was twenty three on SI and twenty four for ESPN. I had him at twenty six. I was the lowest. I just – he's very talented. He's one of the he, most – He should be gifted. a top 20 player. <laughs> he sh he should not. be a top 10 player, like yeah. if we're being honest. Like as talented as he is, he's probably one of the best shooting big men we've ever seen in the league. But I can't have him any higher than 26 because like the rest of these guys, everybody above him has at one point in their career – pretty much with, with exception to Zion, but I mean, I don't think anybody's going to argue with me over Zion being placed there. A lot of the guys above him have led teams to the playoffs and at least had some playoff success. Like the Timberwolves are basically bottom feeders in the league. Year I never year see the playoffs out. again. <laughs> yeah. Year in and year out. They haven't made it since Jimmy Butler was there and he did not get along with towns for no. reasons of his work ethic. And right. it, it 
it shows on defense for him, his lack of work ethic. I don't know if you've noticed how he runs. He looks like he's like 40 years old. He looks like the 40 year old dude at the YMCA. Who's just like struggling to get up and down the court. Like the knees look shot. Yeah. So he's never it's possible. Gonna... He's in pain. He's it a pretty could big be. Dude. He's a big dude. And that could be why he's not good at defense. I remember him at Kentucky being pretty decent on, on the defensive side of the ball, but. And that's, that's really the thing is that's, that has him this low on list because offensively he does everything else. It's just, he's slow on defense and doesn't, doesn't do much out there. He's slow on defense and they don't win. And yeah. that's, that's tough. I mean, for a team that's as bad as they are, um, yeah. having him this high on the list kind of shows how good he is too. That's because true. Any- and the Timberwolves aren't exactly known as like a, a really great organization. Like they've, uh, my buddy and I were talking today. I'm like, I'm hard pressed to think of a team that has been a team in professional sports with exception to hockey, because I don't know as much about hockey. Um, I'm hard pressed to think of a team who has been run worse than the Minnesota Timberwolves or if you thought about it, yeah, I bet you couldn't think of many names. They were, I think they were founded and I think their first season was the 89 season and they made the playoffs a lot with uh, KG. They got bounced in the first round most years and they had one year with Spreewell and company um, and Garnett that they made it to a conference finals and got walloped by the Kobe Shaq Lakers. But since then, which was 2004, they had made the playoffs once, and that was the Jimmy Butler year. Um, the thing of it is, like, they're, they're in a tough position, too, because not a lot of free agents want to go to Minnesota anyway, so they kind of no, have to build it themselves. No, you have to draft well, and they don't yeah. really do that. I mean, they're a team that passed uh, – that had three picks in the first round. They selected two point guards, and neither of them were Stephen Kirk. <laughs> Johnny that, Flynn. That's tough. That's yeah. – that's, so it's, it's a team that doesn't make good decisions. Um, and they've had a lot of number one picks just kind of fall in their lap. And they just not and, really done I mean, Wiggins didn't work out, out. And they didn't really get much out of the Wiggins trade either. I mean, Russell's really not what they thought he'd be. That's just – he's no. best friends with Cat. So I think that's why they want him on the team. So Cat stays. But we'll, we, we'll talk I don't think about it works that. out too well. We'll talk about that more in the Western Conference preview because um, I have some thoughts on that, on that trade that might be, you know – I don't know how controversial because I don't know how many people actually care, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that D'Angelo Russell is actually better than Wiggins. So I think they got a really bad deal there, but yeah, yeah. Towns, it, it's, it's just a shame. We've just not seen enough from him and he's a guy that could very well be on the move. Now I think, I think it's like a Minnesota is a, a team that wants a guy later on this list. Um, unfortunately for Towns is um, Towns and Embiid would not fit together well at all. Um, yeah. So he's just kind of stuck there. And I don't, I don't think they'd give him up for, for Simmons anyway. Um, no. I think their goal would be probably to keep Edwards and Simmons and Cat together if, if they were to get Simmons. So I don't see that realistically happening. Oh, they, they've also said that D'Angelo Russell is not available in that deal. Yeah, so so I, don't, I don't know who you have to give at that point. <laughs> You're not interested in Malik Beasley? If yeah, no, if he, if he, maybe he gets out this year. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you have you have Westbrook at 26, which I think you were the highest highest there to yeah. have Westbrook. Um, I think that's situational. I think he's in a good opportunity. I mean, teaming up with LeBron is never a bad thing. You can run two point guards at once pretty much. And they, you know, they he still is averaging a triple double. So I, I don't I don't know why that's not appreciated more. I, I I have him pretty low on my list, but it's not for probably the same reasons as a lot of people do. Um, I think he's become kind of underrated. Like he's around the league. Like people think of him as like, you know, not a winning type basketball player, but we've seen that he, he can be. Um, yeah. He, he carried the wizards last year to that yeah. playoff spot that they I think he was really huge for them. And I think over the years of his shooting, just being bashed and bashed and bashed, it kind of made him an underrated player. Yeah. It's, it, it's still not great, but no, it's not good. And he takes some bad shots, but um, Giannis can't shoot. And Zion isn't a great shooter. Like there are, there are guys on this list above him that are not shooters. So while he has some bad shot selection, he carried the wizards to their playoff appearance last year I mean he really turned it up he was their leading rebounder last year which I found really interesting um 
yeah, he's he's really good. I have him a lot lower uh, because we'll, we'll just go ahead and do the Russell Westbrook stuff now. He's bad on defense now. He just yeah. is. He doesn't play. Any he's, defense he's a little anymore. bit older. And if he played defense, which he might in LA now that he doesn't have to, you know, have the usage rate that he's had right. to for the last few years, I think maybe he can get back to some of because he used to be good on defense, um, and he's just kind of not cared about it as much. Um, yeah, and that's that's part of why he's as high as he is. It's in LA. I think he's in a good situation. Um, yeah, to be better, uh, other things that he hasn't had to do because he's been doing you know everything else for these crap teams. One thing that's going to be good for the Lakers is they're not going to get as many miles in the regular season on LeBron. Um, Russell, which Westbrook, is why it's huge to have Russell Westbrook on the team. There's a lot of duplication of efforts with LeBron and Westbrook, which I think will hurt them at the playoffs. But for the regular season, I think it's going to be fine. You can rest LeBron. You can have him play off the ball more. He doesn't have to be Superman every night because right. Westbrook can go out and win you a game. Um, yeah. No problem. And uh, yeah, like like I kind of mentioned earlier, we're kind of in the part of the list where we're starting to get to like even some players that you may not be thrilled with if they're your second option. Um, as for, to kind of go backwards, as far as the tiering goes, um, with Russell Westbrook, at least on my list, the 26th spot is the last spot before we have another drop-off. Um, and I have Chris Middleton at 27. You also did. Um, we kind of talked about him already so we'll kind of skip him I have Levine at 28 you had him at 30 um he was decent on defense last year which was kind of like a, a pain point for a lot of people um and he's you know a 27 28 a night scorer yeah. um we'll see if he can take the next step for the Bulls he looked really good in the Olympic team like he played some yeah he played some good defense I think defense the Bulls are set up to to be to be good. And I think, I think he mentioned in a press conference, it's his contract here. So he's really going to make a push to get the bulls in the playoffs and doing well. So, I mean, he could definitely get into the top 25 this year. Easy, easy. He's talented enough for it. And yeah. he, he can put up enough points. He's going to have to play some defense for them this year though, for them to yeah. have any success. That team. Well, I know everybody's, Lonzo really helped like on the perimeter. Um, that's their yeah, only defender. That's much, they got rid of Chris Dunn, so they don't have anyone else. Yeah. It's, that team is going to give up – it'll be – they're the most interesting team to me this year because that team could give up 130, 140 any night, but they're also going to – they have a lot of offense on that team. Yeah, they could also score 130 to 140. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have Clay Thompson up here at 29. Now, he's not coming back until Christmas, and honestly, I didn't know what to do with him. Um, yeah, me neither. I, I think I, I would have had him realistically higher if we had seen him play in the last two years. Yeah. It's just we haven't, so if, if it's, you get, it's hard to rank that. If you get the old clay back, I kind of treated it as like a worst-case scenario. Yeah. If you get the old clay back, you're getting a guy who can guard the other team's best player and hit threes at an absurd rate. Yeah. If, if the defense moves to more of an average place, I can't see him being below average on defense at any point. He's too big, and um, he's – too smart defensively like even if he loses some of the lateral quickness that he had I still think he's going to be at least an average defender I think the shooting yeah. will still be there so really what you're like what you're talking about he, he becomes all of a sudden a lot like Chris Middleton except with a little bit more spot up shooting and maybe a little bit less isolation scoring than Chris Middleton he's way more consistent too he's yeah probably the best flamethrower in the league it's just and I, and I think he'll still have the shooting touch because you don't really lose that in injuries. No. And that's pretty much all he's been able to do is shoot without jumping. So yeah, um, I'm sure his shot is still there. It's really just, you know, on defense, is he still going to be that top tier guy? So, I, I, I mean, I have him top, in the top 30, just barely at 29, because yeah. he, even if he just becomes more of a spot up shooter and a guard, the other team's third best player guy, I still think that's where with his, the way he shoots the ball, I think he's still that still keeps him in the top 30. Um, yeah. You had him at 31. So he's right in there in the conversation. Um, yeah. And I think, I think it really could go any way 27 to 31. I think those guys are, you can mix them around any way you want. It's really just, we haven't seen Clay in two years. That's, that's what I had for the tier. So I have 27 through 33. So it starts with Chris Middleton. It ends with De'Aaron Fox as this group. And then we have a drop off. Um, I had Morant. We kind of talked about him. I had him at 30. I was the highest on DeMontis Sabonis by yeah. a wide margin about, by anybody. 
Um, I guess I'll kind of make the case for him. Uh, he's the best player on a playoff team. Um, last year, they had a really weird year. I'll talk about them more when we do our Eastern Conference preview, but they basically had a mutiny against their coach in the yeah. middle of the season and then kept him for some reason. Um, but the prior year, I mean, they were a fifth seed. He's the best player. He's ca- he's he's very Jokic like. He's like a poor man's Jokic. Like he's got he's got some playmaking stuff. He shoots the ball well, finishes around the basket, he rebounds, he does he's not excellent on defense, but I don't think he's like I don't think he's a huge liability there either. So like I don't know. I think he's cl- pretty close to Carl Anthony Towns. Like, I think if you switched him in Towns, I don't think that you'd make Indiana that much better. I don't I don't know if Minnesota would be that much worse either, um, to be honest. And with him, it's really just the team wasn't that great last year. I don't know if that had anything to do with Nate McMillan being fired. Um, the skill is definitely – yeah, yeah, the skill is definitely there, but the team wasn't great. So I, I have him lower than, than you do. I think the next closest is – Sports Illustrated has at 36. Yeah. And then ESPN at 40. 40. I think that's low for him personally, but um, you had him at 42, which was the yeah, lowest. So, that's the lowest. Um, yeah, I, I think he's really good. I think, I mean, he's an all star player. Like he, he made it, he's, you know, he's an all star caliber guy. So I just, I had a tough time putting him any lower than that. Um, yeah. You had, uh, it looks like this is kind of the area where we start seeing. Maybe yeah, this here. part. This was the hardest part of the list by this far. This was. This was. <laughs> so you you had SGA at twenty nine, uh, Shea Gill just Alexander, uh, uh, Alexander. I had him at thirty two. Um, he was pretty much in the mix for these spots on everybody's list except ESPN yeah. had him at thirty six. He was good his one year with the Clippers, um, when, and when they were a competitive team, it's unfortunate for him that he plays on a team that yeah. is just actively trying to be bad because they, they shut him down at the end of the year just because they're like, oh, well, he might actually help us win games. Uh, right. We, I thought that was such a loss for the Clippers when they gave him away. I think he's going to be so good. And I just put him on the team, put him on the Clippers now and see how I, good they are. I think he gets I think he gets traded at some point. He's not on the Oklahoma City's timetable. Yeah. Like he's, uh, yeah. he's, he's ready to start winning um, and being a part of a winning team. I liked him out of college. I still yeah. like him. He's he's good. He's just unfortunately that team is going to be competing for the top pick. And if they if they don't decide to trade him, um, then I don't know what they're. I mean, they'll probably shut him down again. Um, yeah, well, he did. He, he did get the max signed, so now he's locked. He's at up least and, making money. Yeah, but he can the, demand the trade now that he's that he's set. <laughs> That's that's my that's going to be my favorite thing. Not yeah. really. I, I hate it. But like we're going to start to see that more and more guys sign the max oh, extension. Yeah. And then right after signing, being like, hey, I would like you to trade me. Yeah. yeah it, I, I, that's what he, Beal's probably going to do again. And I, I don't know how to feel bad for Beal at this point, but he got offered a four year 180 contract. And, you know, the last two extensions, I, I can't blame it on him when his team is down by 40 and he's putting up 50 a night and looks like he's pissed. <laughs> well, they don't even have, like, it's rare that the Wizards have a full team of NBA players, like guys yeah. who actually belong in the NBA. Now they have some guys who, I don't know, I, you might get excited about. I, I'm not super thrilled with Abdia. I, I thought he was kind of bad last year. I thought he was going to be better than what he was. I really liked him coming out of college. Um Maybe this year will be better, but I, th- I thought yeah. he was going to be better. Yeah, I I don't know. I, Shea, if I, I just wish he were in a better situation so we could actually see what he can do. Um, a guy who we're hoping to see what he can do. I have at thirty three, De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, um, I think he's probably the top underrated guy in the league. Yeah, he's he did a lot for Sacramento last year, and I think he just needs maybe one more good teammate in there. You know, talking about the play in and the eight seed. He's you have him at 34. I have him at 33. He's 34 for ESPN, 32 for um, SI. So maybe he's not underrated, but I feel like got people around the league don't really talk about him. It, the, the Kings are it's hard to talk about the Kings. <laughs> it's hard to talk about the Kings. They never do anything, but he's quietly over there putting up really good numbers. Um, I think he averaged 25 and seven last year. Yeah, he's pretty, really good for them. Pretty good efficiency. And he is lightning quick. I mean, yeah. just probably the fastest dude in the league. I 
I hope they do well. I was, I always have a soft spot for the Kings. Um, and I would like to see him get some more love. I mean, I, I think he, he's one of the best, you know, one of the best point guards in the league. Um, yeah, they just need to put a team around him. <laughs> right. And I, I mean, obviously their 2018 draft could have gone so many different ways, but they went with Marvin Bagley and that just hasn't worked out at all. But yeah, they, they made the worst possible pick at the, I mean, not, I guess not the worst, but I mean, of the top, that was gonna, of, of yeah, the was gonna go down as one of the best drafts. Yeah, of the consensus top five, that was about as bad as you could have done yeah. picking one. But in fairness to Bagley, who, uh, a spoiler alert, will not be on this list, um, I don't think they put him in the best positions to succeed either. Like, I think, he's, I think he's better than he's getting credit for or showing because the Kings just, they don't know what to do with him and they, you know, he can do some good stuff, but they're they're not letting him do the things that he's good at. Um, well, their GM was very confident that he'd be he'd be better than Doncic on draft night, at least. Uh, their GM also had a a uh, a grudge with uh, Luka Doncic's dad, and that's why they didn't mm-hmm. take him. Honestly, yeah, but... did Lu- did Luka a favor there? Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine uh, him getting wasted in Sacramento. That would just be tragic. That would be tragic. So uh, one thing that they they have that we don't, um, being SI and ESPN, they had Brandon Ingram at 26 uh, for ESPN and 33 for um, SI. I think that's a lot. I have him at 28. Oh, you had him at 28. You did have yeah. him at 28. Okay, well then talk, talk me into Brandon Ingram. <laughs> <laughs> I think – Potential wise, he could be an elite Kevin Durant type scorer. I mean, he's fairly consistent with what he does. He's just not at that next level yet. I mean, I I think in that range of players is about appropriate. I wouldn't put him above any players in the top thirty. Um, maybe maybe over Middleton, but the rest of them like he's definitely under them and below him. I, I would maybe have Clay if we'd seen him in the last two years, um, and and po- possibly Randall too. But, I mean, other than that, I think he's a really good player. I've always liked him since since Duke, and I think he's just not had a great team since he's been in the NBA. No, he – he the Laker group, that young group, Blonzo, Kuzma, Ingram, Randall, those four in particular, they were never in a good situation with the yeah. Lakers, and the, the places the Lakers traded them were not good situations. Right. We I, I'm glad I held on to my Julius Randall stock. I always believed in him. Um, yeah, you saw what he's he was able to do once he got into a, a situation yeah. that actually benefited him instead of like yeah. actively. That's really him. all it takes sometimes. Yeah, and we'll see that with Lonzo. Um, hopefully this year. I think um, he'll be great in Chicago. I think he's good. I, yeah, I, he's an elite defender, a really great playmaker, and the shooting, at least last year, was pretty good. I mean, yeah, there's really not much. I mean, if you're if you're not having an all-star level point guard, he checks all the boxes. He checks all the and boxes that you want. He doesn't even guard. need to be a lights out shooter when, you know, you surround him with DeRozan and, and Levine. So they can do they a can huge do a amount of the scoring. scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my gripes with Ingram were, I, I guess, the lack of self-awareness. I can't remember. There were a ton of Pelicans games that I saw where like down the stretch, like they're needing a basket and it's just like, like you have a walking basket in Zion, like you don't need to complicate things and he's wanting everybody to clear out for him. And um, so that, that piece, and then also he he wasn't that efficient. I mean, he, he was sub 45% on field goals and I think sub sub 40 on threes. I mean, it's just, he just wasn't that efficient. Didn't give you much on the rebounding. I don't think he was not the next step yet. Yeah. He's just, and I, one of the things is if you switch the roles, Zion and, and Ingram, I think both of them would do a lot better complementing each other as like a one-two option if you switch that and not have Ingram taking the, you know, ISO shots that he doesn't need to be taking. I, th- I think so, Zion too. Instead. I think so, too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I could see the case for him moving up. I guess I only had him at 35, so we're not really talking about a huge difference. I guess uh, ESPN, you are, uh, you know, 35 to 26 is a pretty decent, decent gap. But yeah, I might be slightly biased on him because going into the draft in 2016, I thought he was definitely a better prospect over Simmons. And 
So I think he's a little bit better still. Um, that's yeah. why I'm holding on to him. Yeah. Um, so at 34, uh, you know, after Fox at 33, you have another drop off, another grouping of players. We start with CJ McCollum at 34 and end with Vucevic at 40 for me. Um, 34, you had Fox. Westbrook was SI's pick, and Fox was also ESPN's fix or, or pick. Uh, before I have DeAndre Ayton, I guess we'll talk about him now. I had him at 38 in this group of guys. You had him at 32. Uh, it looks like 37 for SI, and I don't, oh, 35 for ESPN. So he's kind of in the mix here. You had him the highest set of anybody. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't disagree with probably anything you're about to say about him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've been a huge fan of him since Arizona. Um, even in high school, I watched a lot of his tapes. So I've really liked him since, you know, all of his mixed hoop mixtapes came out. Um, and just the team he's on is going to be a perfect position for me. You saw in the finals how well he did as the third option on Phoenix and sometimes the fourth option, um, just being a pick and roll and defense guy. <laughs> Yeah. If he can get a jump shot, you know, it's really going to help him out. He doesn't do much shooting, getting out of the paint that much. But, I mean, he's he's a guy who shoots 70% doing what he does every night. And I don't think you ever no. not want that on a team. I, 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 I love DeAndre. And, um, yeah. I, I, I know I have him at 38. I probably would have wanted to put him higher, but I just couldn't put him above some of these other guys. Uh, he's – he's a test tube human being. Like he looks like he was grown in a lab somewhere to play yeah. basketball. <laughs> um, and he rebounds, plays defense. He He's pretty good on switches. He's not quite to the level of like a bam on a bio on or switching on the guards, but he's not, he's not getting blown by uh, right. either. And then he hustles his ass off. I mean, yeah. the dude runs the floor and it create whether he gets the pass um, or not on Phoenix fast breaks, him busting his hump down, you know, to the center of the lane is creating a lot of driving lanes for Booker on the fast break or trailing three point shots like is a direct result of him doing that. He he is exactly what you want centers to do. Um, you know, if you're teaching a center how to play. You know, th these are things that we wish Gobert and and Carl yeah, Anthony Towns absolutely, would do. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of just the opposite of that, and it hasn't always been that way for him. I think Chris Paul did him a lot of favors. Oh, for um, sure. And he—that's really the benefit did. of having him on the team. That's why I think I have Booker that high and uh, Aiden as high as he is because Chris Paul makes a huge difference on everyone he's played. As we've seen that in yeah. Oklahoma City and now Phoenix too. He, so. He's he's won everywhere he's gone. Um, yeah. Chris Paul and and particularly with the Oklahoma City team. Uh, you know, they were a five seed, four seed in the playoffs uh, in the bubble year. Uh, they trade him to Phoenix and they're, you know, one of the worst yeah, teams. Awful. In the league. Yeah. I think going into that year, they had a 0.2% chance of making the playoffs and they got themselves, you know, five yeah, seed or whatever it if was. If you had bet Oklahoma City to make the playoffs that year, uh, you were probably looking pretty good on that bet. Yeah. On the odds for that. Yeah. Um, so I had C.J. McCollum a little bit higher than everyone else, looks like. Um, I have him at 34. I mean, he, he's, a good, he's a good second option for a team offensively. I think he's a good second option. I think he's not as good as some of the second options we have on this list, you know, so far above yeah. him. Um, I, I couldn't – going down on my list, I didn't see any second options I would prefer to him, like yeah. offensively at least. Um, he has some injury concerns. He doesn't play make quite to the level you would like for a guy his size. Um, so those would be the, the counterpoints to him. But, I mean, as far as his shot making, he has every shot. And yeah, when he gets going, he's deadly. Um, and I think it's probably hindered a little bit playing behind Lillard, who has such a high usage rate. Yeah, you talk um, about guys who, you know, we're kind of getting low on the list here for guys who can give you 40 on, on a, any given night. He's he might be one of the last. No, yeah, I think I think he about. would do it. Um, yeah, probably probably the last one on my list at least. Yeah, Anthony Edwards maybe, but not every night. He's just capable of doing it before. Yeah, I I don't. I, he's not on. He's not on my my top fifty. Um, yeah, we'll get to him then. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to him. Um, Thirty five. I had Ingram, who we already talked about uh, quite a bit. Um, 
we're looking at eight and 35 Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was trying to avoid it, but um, I have been, you have Ben Simmons 35. I have him at 36. Um, ESPN thinks very highly of him at 28 yep. and yep. Uh, he's 31 on SI. Um, I think he's become a bit underrated. At the point, uh, yeah, probably at this point he is because of how much everyone just doesn't like him. In the in the public court of opinion, he's underrated, yeah. but I I think he's uh, he's not a primary option uh, for a for a contending team. He's probably no. not a second option on a contending type team. Um, he, Philly, the fit with him and Embiid, it's just it's not a good fit. That yeah, that's not going to work. And if he gets traded, maybe he'll go somewhere that works, but I'd, it's not going to work in Philly and. I'm sure Embiid can't be happy with that. Yeah. I, they basically built the team around it, around what should fit Simmons. It just doesn't work. No, it doesn't because Embiid, they both want to play in the paint. And, yeah. and Simmons, you know, we talked about Zion being a little bit uh, Giannis like. The ideal situation for Ben Simmons would be just shooters around him and like just let him, let him work on the break very much like Giannis and like you know, catch the ball in the paint and play make. He's a, he another guy who's an elite talent, kind of like Towns, where he's just got all the talent in the world, but the work ethic is questionable. I mean, he's, yeah. he's basically the same player he entered the league as. Um, that, that's my biggest thing is he's he hasn't improved on anything since he got drafted. No, he really I mean, hasn't. Um, but to speak to his talent, I mean, it almost hasn't mattered. He's still yeah. an all defensive candidate. You know, right. I think I think he should have gotten defensive player of the year last year. Yeah, and he'll he'll stay on the all defensive team. I think I don't think that is ever going to be in question. His passing is great too, but offensively, as like you said, a number one or two option, it's not going to work, especially when he's afraid to go against the rim when Trey no. Young's right in front he, of him. Yeah, he's shooting. The shooting thing is a, is a complete disaster, and that's why he's not higher on, on yeah. my list. Um, I mean, he is a non-factor shooting the ball, just a complete non-factor from outside of a layup. And even then, sometimes he's kind of afraid to take it because he can't make free throws and he's afraid to get fouled. Yeah. But uh, to, to bring it to kind of a football comparison, you know, he's an excellent basketball player. He does a lot of things very well. He pretty much does everything well except for the most important thing. Yeah. Kind of like Tim Tebow as a quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> so Tim Tebow was an awesome football player. He you know he could run. He did he did a lot of the things that you wanted from a quarterback. Just not, uh, not, just the, not the most important <laughs> thing, which was throwing the ball. Simmons does everything well except scoring, which is the most important thing. And I I don't understand how he gets that much money and you can't shoot the basketball. And I know you're pretty convinced that he's just using the wrong hand, I, which is I definitely think, possible. I think he's using the wrong hand to shoot. I know that's, yeah. a, that's kind of a tinfoil hat thing, but like I, I've noticed, I don't have really any stats to back this up, but I've noticed when watching him play, he seems to favor finishing with his right hand. Um, well, if you've seen him do the uh, the Philly Bell before the games, he does it with his right hand too when he hits the hits the Liberty Bell. Yeah, he's he, he's so, ambidextrous, yeah. and I think he's using I think he's shooting left handed, and I don't think he needs to be, um, but. Uh, so you were not convinced by his off-season uh, social media posts of him schooling I, your, schooling your local YMCA pickup. Yeah, we see uh, it every single every single summer. It's Ben Simmons <laughs> making jump shots in against in, in uh, no defense against rec league uh, against myself at, at the yeah. rec league. Yeah, no. Yeah, um, yeah, no. Every I'm, summer I'm, since he's been in the league, we've seen I, it. And it I'm just, not, it's never. <laughs> I'm not convinced either. Um, so, yeah, so we started with McCollum. I had, you know, we're, we're looking at Simmons in the mid-30s. I had Westbrook, who we's, we've talked about already. I had Aiton, who I love. I hated putting him at 38. I wanted him higher, but I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, interesting that um, ESPN has Draymond Green up here. I think we should I was talk, wondering about talk that about one, too. A little bit later. Um, DeMar DeRozan, is this DeMar DeRozan time? Where do you have him at? You have him at 31. I have him 41? at 41. Yeah. Um, I think another guy who's underrated, he's kind of, he, the media seems to like guys who can shoot threes and he's not one of those guys, but no, he's terrible at that. But it, he also doesn't take many of them because he's, he does what he's good at, which is in the mid range and playmaking. Yeah. And we saw in the playoffs, particularly with the Suns. 
Like the mid range isn't dead. Like it. Oh yeah. And, and Chris Paul brought it back to life. If anything in, in the reg, well, Booker too. Um, in the regular season, you're able to get a lot better shots. Guys aren't playing defense as, as much and you're able to get more fast breaks during the playoff. The, playoffs the game slows down you don't get as many of those transition threes you don't get as many easy baskets you need a guy who can go you know get in the post or isolate and get you a bucket and DeRozan can do that the only thing like he doesn't play spectacular defense but he is probably one of I think the I think the numbers say he's one of the better isolation scorers that we have in the league and if you watch, yeah, he's been play, like that for a see, while. Yeah, if you watch him play, you can see it. And he has money in the mid range. He yeah. finishes around the basket. Like he's just if he if he played in the nineties or like the early two thousands, you would be you know he would be an all star year in year out. One, yeah, you know, one I had trouble with him putting him. I probably had him thirty seven to forty two ish when I was building the list. It was hard to kind of rank him with these other guys. I don't know how many uh, Spurs games you watched last year, but his not play- many, maybe not yeah. one. I, I watched a couple. He actually his his playmaking has really improved. Yeah. Um, he's not bad on the playmaking side. He averaged seven assists a game last year. So um, yeah, that, that caught me by surprise too. And that's on the Spurs. I mean, they didn't have a lot of options offensively, and they weren't a very good team. Um, he's going to well, have especially some- since Murray was out for. Yeah most of the season or maybe all of it, um, you know, someone had to do it. Yeah. Um, so I think in Chicago where he's going to have shooters to pass to, and he's, he's just going to be on a better team. I think he can, yeah. I think he'll continue that playmaking streak. He probably won't average more than seven, but. I mean, uh, I, I don't think with Lonzo being the point guard, I wouldn't no. think he's getting to seven assists again, but he's definitely in a good position. But you can definitely see that the playmaking is there. So I, and I think it's sorely needed on, on that Bulls team. Um, you know, with exception to Lonzo, uh, I don't really think of Levine as a playmaker. Patrick Williams is still young and uh, Kobe White. I, I don't I know like both that. those guys a lot. Um, I don't yeah. think Kobe, I don't think Kobe White shot too well um, in his first two years, but he's a guy who I think could be, you know, as good as De'Aaron Fox someday. I see him kind of, kind of the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's really good, DeRozan. I think he's become very underrated. Um, I wanted him for the Heat, but I think fit was going to be an issue just with Jimmy being kind of not much of a three-point shooter. Bam, who I think can become a three-point shooter, but we haven't seen it yet. Um, You know, having two non-shooters out there is pretty much the limit that you can have in today's game. And uh, he wouldn't have – he, he, he would have been a third and we, you know, you could have staggered their minutes, but then what are we really doing? Um, let's see here. Anything else kind of standing out? This is kind of, this is where ESPN had some bonus. Um, I guess Nikola Vucevic would be the next yeah. guy to kind of talk about. You have him at 43. Okay. I have him at 40 and he's the last guy for me before the next tier of players. Um, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I think he's like DeRozan in a great position in Chicago. I really liked him in Orlando. Um, I mean, he was definitely the best player on that team, and he made a difference in the team. He, he's a guy you don't really hear about. I don't know if that has anything to do with you played for Orlando. Probably had everything to do with that. Yeah. But he's a very skilled player, too. Yeah, he's very skilled, shoots yeah. threes. Um, he's he's doesn't play much defense. Yeah. Rebounds the ball pretty well. Not probably as well as you'd like from a center, but – you know, well, good enough. And offensively, he's really great. He's been an all a multiple time all star. And a couple of those magic teams ended up making the playoffs when honestly they probably shouldn't have because yeah, those look, teams are, are brutal. Yeah. So I, I think he's good. Um I like him. I really wanted him to get um traded to the Celtics at the deadline last year. I was because that's all they need is a good center. And yeah. Obviously, he went to Chicago instead. Yeah, and they didn't really give up too much to to get him, I didn't think. I thought it was a pretty fair package. Now, it ended up being more just because Chicago kind of fell apart during the end of last year um, because one of the draft picks they gave up for uh, to get him was this past draft, and since they fell apart, it ended up being a higher pick than we would have initially thought, but – yeah, I mean, he he's a good player. He's I I think you're I think he's a third option on a on a contending team. I think you're not very you're 
probably not that good. I think we're kind yeah. of in the, in the portion of the list where these guys are, if they're third options, you're, you're stoked. If they're second options, you're probably not very good. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Um, I mean, even I would say he was probably their first or second option in Orlando, and they did make it as an eight seed one or two years. But, I mean, I wouldn't have Vucevic any higher than a, a third option either on a great team. Yeah, it was the Eastern. And I don't think the Bulls are going to be that good. They'll be in the playoffs probably, but I wouldn't put them as a contending team. No, and, no, not a contending team, but I, I think I think it would be a disappointing year for them if they were playing in a play-in game. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so the, they should be better this year. Um yeah, and he, so just to kind of recap, for the tiering, I had 34th, uh, starting with C.J. McCollum through Vucevic at 40, and we have kind of another drop-off, and this is the final drop-off for this top 50, at least for these, um, you know, for what we were talking about. There's kind of a big gap between Vucevic and this next group, I think. So um, I actually have I have a couple guys in the most recent tier that you have in this last tier here in uh, yeah. MPJ go, and LaMelo Ball. Let's go ahead and talk about I, – I guess we'll start with MPJ and then we can move on to LaMelo. I, I think he's such a talented player on offense. Um, he showed some sort of defense last year, but he's another guy like Ingram who I think can be an elite three-level scorer like Durant. Um, and he's definitely shown it in spurts, but – you know, working behind Jamal Murray and Jokic, you're not going to be able to do it every night. I, I think he's more likely to be in the top 25 when we do this next year. Than he yeah, is especially to, with than um, he is Murray be, being out. Than he is to be out of the top 50. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, he could take a huge step forward. Um, it, yeah, I have him at 43, mainly just because the guys I have above him, I either feel more strongly about their potential and their situation or in most cases, I've seen them perform in in, in the playoffs and key. Moments. I would like to hear about Tobias Harris over MPJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Tobias Harris. I guess we can we can skip to him. So I have Harris <laughs> at forty two, and uh, MPJ at forty three. Harris is good for them. Um, he ran a lot of pick and roll. Uh, he's their second option, and they were the they were the one seed. So yeah, like I think his situation is pretty pretty perfect for him. His situation is ideal, which helps him. Um, but he's an, a super efficient scorer. I mean, you're talking nearly 50% on you know overall field goal percentage. You're talking 40s for threes. He's getting you six, seven rebounds a night. He gets you a couple of assists. Um, yeah, I, I like just, Tobias Harris. I, I think we've – I think it's a kind of – piggyback off what you said about MPJ's potential. Obviously, he his potential is much greater than Harris. We've seen the best that we're going to see from Tobias Harris. Right. Um, this is just kind of for next year for me, not like projecting forward the next five years. Obviously, when we do this next year, I fully expect MPJ to be above Harris. Um, I think they're very similar, though, in terms of like what they can produce for next season. I think you're looking at 20-ish points a game. I think you're hoping for six, seven rebounds on efficient shoot shooting. And Yeah, with Murray out, I mean, I think MPJ is definitely a 20-point guy because um, he'll, he'll be their next go-to after Jokic, I, I guess. I would have to assume. I mean, they don't, yeah. really, they don't really have a lot else. I, I mean – Will Barton is a good scoring option, but not as your second option. Uh, he right. has to be the second option for them. And if they want to kind of keep pace in the West, he's going to have to be very good for them. And and he could be. Um, I just haven't seen it yet. I watched him get yeah. absolutely torched in the playoffs on defense. And I just yeah. – that was like my most recent memory of him. And that's right. That's the he, thing that's for him is his defense. At. Yeah. Um. So you have uh, – I guess we can talk about LaMelo now. You have him at 39. I think yeah. that was the highest of anybody. Um, yeah, I'll stand by that one. I think he can be one of the best point guards in the league in almost no time. Um, I, and I also don't hate Charlotte's lineup. I think – No, I don't know, either. He has a really good opportunity there to produce with them, and he's surrounded by good players too, and I think he's definitely one of the best passers in the league. Um it's a little bit of a projection to have him in the top 40, but I think he's going to definitely have a great year. Um, we'll definitely have him at least in the top 40 next year. Yeah, I think so. I have him at 48. He barely yeah. cracked the top 50 for me. Yeah, I'm surprised um, by that. I, I like him. I think he's a fun player to watch. Um, defensively, 
I think, you know, in a playoff series, I think he would get, you know, kind of taken advantage of. Um, his numbers weren't quite where I would like them for like a top 40 guy in the league. Um, but I think, yeah, I, he has all the potential in the world to be one of the best point guards in the yeah. league. I, I, there were a lot of people who thought he was a, a bust coming in. I never thought that, but I did not think he would be as good as he has been this early. Yeah. I definitely didn't think, you know, just as a rookie, he would be that good. Um, no. The, the shoot, one thing I will say, his shooting is further along than I thought it would be. And that's yeah. why he's in the top 50 for me. Um, but w looking at the point guards I have ahead of him, I just couldn't, I couldn't put any, but any of those point guards below LaMelo Ball at this stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why I had him lower. I think you had him the highest out of anybody. He didn't even crack the top 50, which I think is shameful. Um, yeah, yeah. Sports Illustrated has been at 51. Well, I guess he kind of was because like they also have Jamal Murray, who's going to miss most of the year on their list. I think yep. Fred, I think Fred Van Vliet above LaMelo Ball is and Mike Conley. This is where their lists start to get a little a little wild in this in this area. They got Julius Randle at 41, Mike Conley at 43, which I thought was insane. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and Van Vliet at 46. I I couldn't believe the Malcolm Brogdon slander either. I mean, he was a borderline. I have him at 41. He was he was starting off this final tier for me. I think he's great. He was a borderline all-star last year. I don't know yeah. where. He, I have him at 49. Yeah. I, he's Is he on the list for ESPN? It doesn't look like he is. I'm not, yeah, I don't think so. I can't. They have Miles Turner at 44. I I don't know what games they were watching where they thought Miles <laughs> Turner was better than Malcolm Brogdon, but. Right. Um, yeah, th their lists are definitely, I would say, more questionable with what we have. Yeah, we have a I, lot more agreements than, than well, we do with that. If, if you think about before last, Miles uh, Turner got them. What he led the league in shot blocking, which is great, um, but he also only got like six rebounds a game. Yeah, and, and during last off season, they couldn't give him away. They were trying to just give him away, Miles Turner. I thought the, uh, well, the Celtics were going to get him. I thought um, and Danny Ainge wanted. Trade. Yeah, Danny Ainge wanted T.J. Warren along with it, which for whatever reason. I don't yeah. know why you need TJ Warren on the Celtics team that you had. I, but. I think you guys need another wing, but that's just yeah. me. I guess it, it, I think the trade was supposed to be Doug McDermott and Miles Turner. And you get rid of Gordon Hayward, which I think would have helped out a lot because the Celtics, like where we heard, is a lot of rim protection and well, height. Yeah. Instead, you got nothing for Gordon. No, Hayward. no, we let yeah Gordon Hayward just got to go wherever he wanted, and Celtics got nothing out of that. So. Yeah, that was that was tough. Um, Not my favorite day. <laughs> yeah, Brogdon. I mean, you could argue he was their second option. I think that would, I think that would probably be an easy argument. I mean, Sabonis missed some time, so mm -hmm. during those times, he kept the ship afloat as a first option, and he's good. I mean, he's just really solid. Um, yeah, I, I think I, he's pretty good too. I think if he's, I think he's, if he's your third option, I think you're you're looking real good. Well, when he was in Milwaukee, I think he was the third option, and they were really solid with him doing yeah. as as that role. They, they, they their decision to pay Eric Bledsoe over him was a disaster. Yep. Um, I guess you wouldn't have ended up with your Holiday, and maybe they don't win the title, but that was still not a not a great decision on their part. Um, I guess this is Kyle Lowry range too. Uh, SI had him at forty. Uh, ESPN had him at forty three. I had him at 44 and you had him at 40. I am shocked that I had him the lowest out of anybody. Yeah. As a heat fan, I'm surprised by that. too. <laughs> um, and I, I didn't really want to put him at 40, but I feel like with the position he's in with the heat, you know, he can be a top 40 guy. Mm -hmm. um, he's not having to do a lot of work when he has, you know, shooters around him, Jimmy Butler and Bam running offense as well. So I think his situation is pretty good. The situation is really good. Um, yeah. And I think he's going to, his numbers are going to be down this year um, just because he's not going to get the volume of shots. We don't need him to shoot that much. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we need what we need from him is to be a primary ball handler. That's one thing that we've been sorely lacking is we can't ever get Jimmy Butler off the ball. He has to do everything creation wise for us. And, you know, Bam's not creating off the dribble. He creates mainly off of those uh, handoff plays. 
Um, so getting him off the ball a little bit more too is just going to be really beneficial. He's also a good team defender. It's just a good yeah. defender. He's just a, he's one of him and Chris Paul, and I'm going to put Trey Young in this group as well. They are some of the last like pass first point guards we have. Um, it's yeah. good that that archetype is going to die with Chris Paul. I feel like and and whenever- I I do like him. Um, I do like Lowry better than Drogic for the team. So I think that's another good thing for Miami as well. Yeah. We're, um, we're, he's definitely got the experience. I mean, he has a ring, so definitely yeah. can't hurt. I like him more than Drogic, but not yeah. like a, not like a, a huge amount. Um, I think defensively he's going to help out a lot. And Drogic being more of a score first guy, I feel like um, – it is not as much what we needed as what we we just need to play. We need a guy who can who can kind of orchestrate the offense a little bit more. Um, you know, he'll take some charges too. So yeah, that always will. helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Now I, I've had a tough time coming to terms with him joining the team because he's given us fits in the past with the charge taking and just his 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 gamesmanship is what I'm going to call yeah. it now. I was going to call it antics, but now that he's a part of my team, it's it's good gamesmanship. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's definitely one of the most annoying players to watch if you, he's not on your team. I every time they play the Celtics in the in the playoffs, I mean, I couldn't stand him for yeah, his yeah, antics or gamesmanship. Yeah, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, okay, so ESPN, we've already kind of stopped talking about as much. They also had Mike Conley in the top fifty. Did I miss something with Mike Conley? I, I like <laughs> I, I like Mike Conley. Like I for a while there, he was wearing the belt as the most underrated player in the league. Um, but he's older now. I mean, yeah, I think I th- top 50, maybe three years ago, two years ago, but uh, yeah, I couldn't put him in it this year. No, no. I mean, and he's, he's been kind of inconsistent for them. He got it back together last year. Um, but the bubble year, he was, he was not very good for them. Um, so he's kind of a prove it guy to me. He's older point guard. I, it's a tough fit with him and Donovan just because of the size Right. But you do have Gobert to kind of like make up for a lot of that defensively. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, as a top fifty guy in the league, you're talking about a good third option. Uh, you know, at this stage, or in, even in some cases, a second option. Like, are you pumped if Mike Conley is your is your second option? Like, no. I don't think you're getting anywhere. You're, with that. you're, you're, a, you're a bad team, and that's kind of what he has to be for them because Gobert just isn't anything offensively. Um, even as a third option, I'm not that thrilled with Mike Conley. Um, I'm just, I don't know. Maybe if you I'm, take Donovan out of that lineup, it's it, it doesn't look great on paper. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, they just shoot a lot of threes. And and they play Jordan Clarkson. I, I could see an argument for Jordan Clarkson above Mike yeah. Conley. I would, um, I would hear that. Yeah, I like Jordan Clarkson. I liked him since Mizzou, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a shame Mizzou can't ever do anything. <laughs> we have really good players in the NBA, but it never yeah. amounts to anything for us. It, yeah, no, they, they don't show it till after Mizzou, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I, I do have a, a – I just noticed something that might be missing from your list. You don't have Gordon Hayward. I don't have Gordon Hayward. I thought about Gordon Hayward. Um, honestly, I really liked his role in Charlotte, um, but I'm taking I'm taking Edwards and the rest of the guys over him. Okay, you're gonna have um, to you're gonna have to make the case for Edwards over Gordon Hayward to me. I, that's it's forward looking. I think he's super explosive, and he's I mean in a spot where he can be a really productive player because the rest of his team is terrible. So. In terms of production and numbers, I think he could have the edge. Um, Gordon Hayward's position in in Charlotte's lineup is pretty perfect for him because he doesn't have to do a lot of the stressful work, but he can also, you know, give you 15 to 20 every night pretty consistently. He did that with Boston even after the injury, and that was, yeah. I think, a huge piece of Boston's season last year was losing Gordon Hayward, which I wasn't a huge fan of him uh, before Boston, but then when he left, I mean, he, the Celtics were a sub- 500 team the entire year and I think a lot of that had to do with taking that fourth option away from Boston it's it's not even just his scoring he's a really great playmaker for a guy that's not a a super great ball handler um he's just really smart he knows when to cut he knows who to throw the ball to he's a ball mover there's a lot of I think Edwards is more of a ball stopper once you swing the ball to him it's not 
It's not moving from that spot. Yeah, no, he'll take the ball to the hoop. If if you want to be a winning team, I think Gordon Hayward helps you more this next year than Edwards does. I Um, think for at least for Boston when they had him, I mean, he was Boston's fourth option, and that's pretty incredible. I think they really felt that last year. Yeah, yeah, they did, and they, I, their their year to make a run for the title was the bubble year. Yeah, that um, was that was a great team. I still have nightmares of Bam's block on Tatum. Oh no, yeah, that game. that changed the whole <laughs> series. Yeah, I I th- you guys were the one team that year I didn't want to face. I didn't know that we would be able to find a way to to beat you guys, but the hero just played out of his mind. Bam oh my goodness, was, yeah. Bam tore you guys apart. The yeah. only the only and and thankfully Brad Stevens didn't catch on, but Enos Cantor was like low key tearing us he up. He was really good. Yeah, he was really good in the series and we got him back so i think it'll help out i think brad when he took over just and we can talk about this in the episode where we go over the the eastern conference but he really tried to assemble the the old celtics teams that were in the conference championships yeah, which, I, I noticed that i noticed yeah. that um so I, I i can't believe i still can't believe you got Edwards over hayward hayward was a uh, an efficient 26 and 4 last season it was 26. I don't, I don't even no, realize tw- that. No, 20. Oh, 26 20, and four. Okay. Six, uh, six rebounds, four assists on efficient shooting. Yeah, there's exactly not, efficient. There's not many guys left on this list who, or even above him, who are doing that. I mean, that's like, to, that's like you've got Tobias Harris on here. That's very similar to what he does. Um, and, you know, if he, was, if he was in a role, I think, where – you know, his Utah Jazz days where he's the king of the team, he's probably still giving you 25 a night, yeah. I would think. And I know he's been injured a lot, um, but it's not like chronic injuries. He doesn't have, like, back issues or, like, knee issues. He just has these freak accidents where, like, he just seems to be unlucky. Yeah. Like the ankle thing, you know, with the Celtics, that, like, that, that wasn't an issue of his – his health as an overall right. thing. That was just a, a, a bad thing that happened. And last year, I think he broke his arm or something in like a I think weird, his hand, his hand in like a weird yeah. collision. Like these aren't things that are just like nagging injuries. He's just been unlucky. Um, so I think he could theoretically stay healthy. Um, yeah. I, in this I, range too, I think 45 to probably, if we were to build a list out to like 60 or 70, I feel like 45 to 60, you're going to get a lot of, players that you could just interchange throughout the list that's true in so many different ways that's true and and edwards would have been an honorable mention on my list i mean he would have he would have probably been in the 50 to 60 range for me just if i had to guess i would have to actually go through and do it um same with jeremy grant he was like just missed the cut for me which he's yeah he's on your list at 46 i was surprised we didn't see more of him um my i i looked at him but the only thing with grant was he I think he was just good stats, bad team guy. Yeah. Um, well, I really liked I liked him a lot better in Denver because the team was better, and I think he also had a better role with them in terms of not being a first option. Yeah. Um, whereas he ran the scoring in Detroit, and obviously that's why he was able to do 24, 25, whatever it was. Yeah. The reason I don't I, – I, I still was hesitant on him is, like, if I'm talking about him as a third option, like, I still am not, like, super thrilled about that. If I'm like, I like him as a third option, and I think I honestly don't hate Detroit's lineup now that they have no, Cunningham. I don't so, I, and that could honestly really benefit them if they use Cade in that way, and then kind of bump Grant down to a two or three option. I think they're going to be mm. fighting for. We'll talk about it more when we do the Easter Conference preview. I think they're going to be in the play in mix. I really do. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I don't hate that team at all. No, I, they actually make a little bit of sense now. They got rid of some of the log jam at center that they had. Um, yeah. yeah. They're, they're a decent team. Um, let's see. Capella was one that Sports Illustrated had at 48. I had him at 46. Um, I can't imagine putting Chris Tapps, Porzingis. I, yeah. Uh, I don't know the logic above, there. Above him. Um, he was one of those guys that probably would have just missed it for me. Um, cause it, and it's taken some time for him to grow into a role since his you know glory days in Houston for maybe that one season. Capella. Uh, Capella, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I liked him in, in Atlanta, and I think he's pretty positioned pretty well to do good things there. I think if you're one of the people who argues for Gobert, I think you'd have a tough time not arguing for Capella. Yeah, they're very of, similar. A lot of the defensive stats that um, you get from, you know, the defensive rating in particular, 
uh, which is just um, how many points do you allow per 100 possessions? Capella is like four points under Gobert. Like he's also yeah. really good on defense. And that's a stat that I don't really like for anybody except for centers. Right. Um, but Capella is like 15 and 15. You know, he's yeah. pro- he's probably he may be the best rebounder we have in the league. And I just I couldn't have a guy like that who's really good on defense. You're getting shot blocking and rim protection and elite rebounding. He's a great rim runner. Um, I couldn't leave a guy like that off this list. Um, yeah, I like Capella a lot. Um, and he probably is at 51 or 52 if I were to build it out Yeah, for me. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting kind of down to the end here. Yeah, um, this part is who, who knew it was going to happen here. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised we have as many similar as we do in, in this bottom part of the list. Yeah, I know. I, it, it, it's been kind of the case. I mean, there's been a few outliers like Gobert for you versus me. And um, there was one that I had pretty high that you did not. I guess Sabonis. Um, yeah. Yeah. Randall, um, I had considerably lower than yours. That's true. Julius Randall, too. I think centers and bigs have become very underrated in the league. Um, like people just – a lot of media people and just some fans don't think that you need a center at all. I, I don't think that that's true. I think it's a lot like the running back position in the NFL – like, if you have Derrick Henry or McCaffrey, like, if you have an elite center, um, be that Jokic and be like, that's a game changer for you, just like it yeah. is in the NFL. But paying a guy, you know, as we get down to the bottom of this list, you know, you wouldn't want to be paying these centers max contracts. And it's insane because there are some players on at this point of the list who have a max or really, really wanted a max in free agency this year, like, Right. I think Tobias signed a max and Collins really I don't know if Collins ended up getting the max. Collins got a max. He did get the max. Yeah. yeah then he's the he's at 50 for us. So yeah, he's at 50 for both of us. I, he's not on the list for or he's not in the top 50 for either of the others. Um I couldn't wait. Michael Porter Jr. was at 52 for SI. That is crazy. Yeah, that's pretty insane. I don't know what their logic is there. Um yeah, I don't yeah, know. There's, there's don't a lot know, of guys above I, I don't know I don't what think. I don't know what world Mike Conley is better than Michael Porter Jr., but we'll leave that where it is. Yeah, John Collins, I thought he played really well on Embiid when he got switched on to him or matched up with him in that in that Philly series. He was good defensively. He shoots threes pretty well. Um, he finishes around the basket. He rebounds. He plays defense. Like, he does a lot of the things you want from a sort of big guy, sort of wing player. Like he's just kind of a, yeah. a, a stretch. I think four. he's great for them. It's a stretch four. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's, he, he was good for them. Um, you didn't have Draymond. I had Draymond at 49. The craziest thing I think we saw, where was Draymond for? 37 on ESPN. 37. I actually had Draymond at, at 50 until this morning, I think, until my, I made my last yeah, adjustments. Both, both SI and uh, ESPN had Draymond at the top 40, which I think oh, is yeah. crazy. I saw him at 35. Yeah. I, I couldn't leave He's be very impactful for them. Oh, yeah. Like his, his role for the Warriors is incredibly important. It's just his production numbers, I guess, in terms of what you get out of offense, other than just running, you know, the playmaking side. Um, it's just low. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, you're going to get... He's older, too. You're going to get eight points from him, maybe, if you're lucky. <laughs> you might yeah, get zero. But, um, but I think his his playmaking is so much more impactful than his lack of scoring His for play, that team. His defense, his, he's still got it on defense. Um, his rebounding, he, you know, he might... He can have a big rebounding night. He's not going to be dominating the boards anymore at this stage in his career. Um, but defensively, he did a phenomenal job on Davis in that play-in game. And, um, you know, he's still got it defensively. And that's that's going to be huge for them. He's, you know, sort of like what we talked about with Simmons. Um, he does a lot of the things, a lot of things very well. It's just shooting, which is arguably yeah. the most important. He doesn't do well. Um, yeah, he's probably one of the guys who has the most double-doubles with, with, without including points, which is impressive in its own way. But, yeah, he's not blocking shots anymore either at this stage, yeah. but he, he plays good positional defense and he makes things tough on an opposing big man, um, which you need out West. 
We, yeah, you, definitely. You, you have to have that with Aiton floating around, Davis, Jokic. Like, there's a lot of tough big guys out in the Western Conference, and they're going to need that this year to. I think he's one of the smartest be. guys to on the court. So pretty good, much at any time. He's a good leader. I mean, you got to yeah. take the good with the bad with him, with the with the screaming at officials and like yeah. and screaming at teammates, but. Um, you're never going to question his effort. And that's, that's a huge thing too. Um, I guess what we can kind of end this off with is Pascal Siakam. You had yeah, him at 48. I, I had him at 47, um, 44 for SI and 38, which I thought was pretty high for him at uh, ESPN. Um, uh, I mean, two years ago, we were, at the beginning of the year, he was in the MVP conversation. Uh, yeah, I think 2019, we'd, we'd probably have him top 30 if we did Easy. that back then. Um, and I think it's just the team is not that great. I mean, he's he, – I think he's pretty good at times. Like, he's shown that he can be a good player, but I with his team, I don't think it's a great situation. I, I think you could talk me into top 40 with him um, pretty easily. I think – I mean, anyone I think that we have in the top, like, 40 to 45 could – probably end up in the top 40 at some point yeah um i think last year for the raptors it was just a it's just a tough year um yeah. they, they played in tampa instead of toronto so they had basically no home games um i've heard that from some articles that i've read that siakam has really struggled with the mental side of the pandemic and that might be a reason for his you know fall in play He's still good. He's good defensively. He's long. He's a good athlete. He can guard, I would say, one through four pretty easily. And yeah. he can score some points. Now, they've, he's been kind of miscast in Toronto as a number one option and a scoring option. And when they had Kawhi, like we saw that it was really good. Um, obviously, they won the title. Right. Um, but if he's your third option, a scoring and – I think that's a good fit. I could see the Warriors making a push for him for a trade. Yeah, I, I think that would he's, be a great fit for them. Yeah, he's he's a good third option to have. And I think one of their main problems last year was they were they didn't even know who their first through third options were on the team between him, Van Vliet, and um, Lowry. So there's was, there wasn't like a really defined way of going about it. I think which kind of hurt them. I think the Scotty Barnes fit is going to be tough for them this year too with with Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, Siakam. we'll see how that works out. I was surprised by that pick. I have to imagine he's on the mood. He move. He's not as young as people think. Um, he was kind of a he was an older player coming out of college. He, so he's uh, Scotty Barnes. No, uh, or, Pas Pascal. Yeah, well, he was a G League guy too. So he spent a couple of years in the G League, I think, before yeah. you know he broke out. So I mean, we've probably seen the best of what we're going to see from him. But if he gets back to the level he was at. Uh, not last season, but the season before. Like you're talking about, um, you know, potentially, you know, he's in the, I think he's in the 35 to 28 range, probably, if we're talking about him two years ago. Yeah, um, yeah, probably. And he could get back to that level, but um, he, it also could have been a fluke year for him. And that's why I have him at 47 versus, you know, in the 30s. Yeah, I mean, all around for the Raptors that year, they had just an incredible run. Obviously, Kawhi, Kawhi's run was, you know, like the Jordan runs in the playoffs, but you yeah. know, everyone else also had just an incredible run as well. Yeah. Yeah, they, they got a good playoff run out of Kyle Lowry, which before that yeah. we really hadn't seen from him. And Van Vliet really, Van Vliet really got out there. Yeah, I, I – they've – they could – I never know what to make of Toronto because I thought they were yeah. going to take a huge – step back when they lost Kawhi, but they didn't. And then last right, year, yeah. we were kind of expecting them to take a step forward and they didn't. So, right. And it's the teams weren't even that different between no. you know the playoff team and then last year's team. Yeah, no, not at all. I think, I think a lot of it had to do with the Tampa thing. I really do. Yeah. I think it's tough when you don't, when you're like, if you think about an NBA team playing 82 game, well, I guess they played 56, it's 82 road games, basically 56 last year, I think is what they yeah. played. You're talking about 56 games on the road. Like that's, that's tough. And you never get to go home. Like that's right. That's, that would be tough. Um, I guess we can kind of talk, I, I talk a little bit about some honorable mentions. I guess we could, we don't have to talk too much about them. Um, Van Vliet, Jeremy Grant, uh, Mikhail Bridges would have been on there for me. Yeah. I would have um, had Draymond Green as an honorable mention and probably Gordon Hayward as well. 
one guy I thought was too low on their list, uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. He was yeah. in the, he was in the top fifty for me before I changed my list. Um, I think I, he, I like him a lot. I felt weird about having four Atlanta Hawks in the uh, in my top fifty, which is yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> it doesn't it didn't sound right to me. Um, granted, Collins and Clint Capella are the are in the you know the back half of it, um, but yeah, he's a good score, pretty decent playmaker, like good player for them. I. I think Atlanta will will be kind of vying for, you know, Eastern Conference championship territory yeah. this year. I think they're in the mix. I think they're, you know, they could be a top three seed. Um, and if not, they're they're pretty close, I'd say. I, I don't want to – I wouldn't want to play them in the playoffs. I'll just say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's about it. I, I mean, that's about all I got. We both had Collins at 50. Yeah, I was surprised how similar a lot of our picks were, at least if they oh. were the same the same number. We had a, like a good range of players that yeah. were, you know, around the same. You did have Marcus Smart at 44, which I'm yeah. interested to hear the case for. I, I think he's just the heart and soul of the Celtics. And <laughs> so important to the team. Whenever, I think when they're just, they started going below 500 and getting towards that level last year, it's when he missed about a month of the season. And it, you really miss his defense when he's not there. So there may be bias with having him in the top 50, but I think he's, really important to the team i think he's um, in, i think he's important but i think i'm just glad i didn't get traded <laughs> yeah you guys i thought you guys were going to trade him there for a minute um yeah i, I think that contract is going to look real that you gave him is going to look real ugly at the end of it um, i think he's underpaid in terms of how some other players are getting paid though that I are agree. in his role like I that agree. it was kind of a low number to with what people have been getting i agree um I didn't have him in here. He, I guess I would have thrown him in the honorable mention. He's he's probably top sixty. If yeah. I'm looking at some of the guys that they have, uh, they, well, the they have they have staff. Clay at fifty seven for Sports Illustrated. I'd love to hear about that one. <laughs> yeah, that, I was confused by that too. I, I'll finish up my 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 smart talk my uh, smart comments, and then I I still am confused by their list. Uh, I thought Smart kind of fell off a little bit defensively last year. It may have been that they were um, not contending as much as they had been in years past, so the effort wasn't there. But if that's the future of him going forward, yeah. like he had trouble with guards last year. He could still yeah, guard the big guys, but he had a lot of trouble with the with the, the quicker guards, and that would frighten me as a Celtics fan. If it's that possible that his his bubble performance is probably the best that we'll see out of him. Yeah, but I mean, he was he was huge in those series. I know you got to see a lot of that from yeah, the other there, side. But... There were certain guys who were built for the bubble, like yeah. just nothing but you know the ball in the game. Yeah, and with no, no other sounds, and he's one who barks at you and gets in your head. Yeah, and there's no one to drown it yeah. out. I I like him. I was kind of hoping you get we would find a way to pick him up. Um. Yeah, Clay. Let's talk about Sports Illustrated for a second. So they have Clay Thompson at fifty-seven, who's coming back in December. Yeah. So I, I, I but thought DeAndre maybe, Hunter right above him. I can't imagine the case for DeAndre Hunter above Clay Thompson. Yeah. And, and like, even if you wanted to say like, oh, well, Clay is missing until December. Like, I could understand that argument. But then they have Kawhi Leonard in the top ten and Jamal Murray right. in the top thirty. I'm just, yeah. I'm like. You kind of the, the, both of these things can't be true if you're going to punish Clay for being injured, and like, what did he forget how to shoot? Yeah, like, he's by no means not in the top fifty. Like Mikhail, Br they have Mikhail Bridges above him, which is like Clay Thompson's worst case scenario. Is like he's like a defensive player similar to Mikhail Bridges, who's very good on defense. I'm not saying anything bad about Mikhail. I love Mikhail Bridges. Um, but Clay Thompson is like a an all time shooter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're not losing that whenever you just hurt your legs. I mean, yeah, all you can do is is shoot when you're injured like that. So, so I, I think no, it's just gonna say for the most part, I'm not too offended by the other lists. I mean, there were some questionable placements. I'm sure some people would say some of our placements were questionable. I guess I'm sure there are. Yeah. The Bradley Beal at 11. Is, uh, and, I thought that was way and, too high. And Middleton at 19 is a little crazy to me. Um, the, the most heartbreaking part of this of those lists to me was seeing Kemba Walker in the 70s and accepting that that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is It is sad. Uh, but 
there's an in, uh, when Isaiah Thomas um, uh, got injured with Cleveland or or whatever after the Cleveland situation kind of sputtered out and he got shipped off to L.A. Um, I read an interesting stat. There have been zero point guards or zero players under six feet or under who have made an all star game past the age of 30. Zero in NBA wow. history. And I think that's really telling for Kemba Walker. At yeah, he, he, I mean, he was not the same after that knee injury. No, no. And he, I don't think he's the point guard that the Celtics need. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the Eastern Conference preview. I have some interesting thoughts on the Celtics. Yeah. The thing with Kemba last year was his first five on five play for that season was the season. He didn't get to play five on five before the season started, which and is I, why he looked so terrible. At the I beginning. think that's why a lot of guys, that's why the Mavericks got off to a slow start. Everybody was counting on the season starting in like January. And yeah. then all of a sudden they were like, like two weeks before the season or like a month, two months before the season, they're like, Nope, we're starting in December. And right. no, nobody had ramped up their conditioning. Like it, it, it's particularly with like, teams that made deep runs into the playoffs, um, you know, in the bubble, Denver struggled with injuries, right. the Lakers, LA. str- the Lakers yeah. struggled, the Celtics struggled, the heat struggled. Um, the final four all struggled with either yeah. injuries or record wise or both. And it'll be interesting to see how that, you know, plays out with the back to the normal schedule. I mean, we might not, we might see the the playoffs like we're used to and had nothing to do with how last year went because of, because of that reason. Who knows? Yeah. 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 Well, we, I think we've got a good season um, kind of, that we're going to be heading into. I think the East is improved and the West is competitive as always, so it should be a really yeah. exciting year. Um, the East is starting to be at least more competitive. They're still pretty top-heavy, I think, but um, one through five, I'd say, is a lot better than they were two years ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like maybe five years ago, even five years ago, we were talking about, like, you know, it was basically – whoever LeBron was on, yeah. like maybe one other team and then the rest of the teams had no shot. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, join us next week where we're going to be previewing the Eastern conference. Um, and I hope you guys have a good night.